don't know in chat um, and uh, what you got going on, what you're doing, what you'd like to promote. So Batari. Yeah, so I'm an academic debater. So I do like collegiate debate and uh, I thinking about Twitch streaming some of them or, you know, in integrating more of that work with Twitch because it's like 40 hours a week of work. So I might as well, you know, be multitasking, right? Yeah. But uh, most of that is like in psychoanalysis and like a, uh, like postmodern stuff, so yeah. <laughs> so you're Jordan Peterson's nightmare, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, postmodern neo-Marxist, right? Nice, pretty much, pretty much. Nice. Good stuff. Well, we've always loved uh, having you here and hearing your uh, takes, Katari. So um, thanks for thanks for showing up again, uh, Demon Mama. Yeah, my name's Demon Mama. I'm a lefty politics edutainer here on Twitch. Nice. <laughs> um, we uh, do a really fun show, a big mix of news and react and debates. Um, lately, I did my big one-on-one uh, -on -one debate. Finally, someone accepted the challenge, um, and it was great. Um, it was so, on Monday, right? Yeah, it was on, on uh, Monday. We actually ended up having Cuspin. two debates. We had a chat debate afterwards that went wonderfully. It was really, really good faith debate. People learned a lot. It was great. Um, you can follow me at Demon Mama Live here on Twitch. Um, you can follow me at Your Demon Mama on Twitter. So if you are interested in my oh, takes, want okay. to learn more about me, come hang out with my absolutely amazing community. Um, Come on and hang out. Um, we'd love to have you. So yeah, that's important yeah. to remember, chat. So don't look for your demon mama on Twitch. Don't look for demon mama on Twitter. Those are those are you know that's that that's how you figure. That's how you navigate that. If you're having trouble finding demon mama, that might be your problem right there. And we we always love having uh, you on uh, demon mama. Uh, your takes are super based. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, like Rainbow Six, uh, Rainbow Silks, uh, Dahlia joining us again. How are you doing, Dahlia? Hey, I'm doing okay. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, no worries. So I'm Rainbow Silk um, on Twitter, yeah. probably on hey, Twitch. Godzilla. I think it's, it's good to see you. the same thing. I think it's basically that everywhere. So you can just find me there. Um, I'm the co-chair of the Green Party of the United States. I'm, I'm the co-chair of the National Lavender Green Caucus, so all the queer folks. And uh, I mostly stream um, live protest stuff from out at the George Floyd Rebellion here in Seattle. So mostly nighttime activities and things like that. So if you're not um, really into spicy kind of streams and things, then you might not like it because it does get, you know, a little real world. I don't know what to tell you about that. The uh, last so debate anyway, will be up if you like that kind of YouTube stuff, you can segment. find me. I do it basically every couple of days or so, depending on how hurt I am. <laughs> so anyway, cheers. I'm looking forward to our yeah, discussion today. Yeah, fuck. Dahlia is a real one. The first time I ever watched no your boy stream, God, Dahlia, no way. Um, no, Sorry. I probably had watched your stream before then, but one of the first times I ever sat down and watched <laughs> your stream was the incident where uh, somebody ran off with your, was it the gimbal or was it the camera that they ran oh. off? Both. It was the both. They threw the camera into the street and I found it. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. This it's an exciting uh, stream, uh, Dahlia. You do like a lot. You really put yourself on the line uh, there for, for us, and like those pop. injuries that you you know you've you've gotten like sort of injured in the line of duty. Um, I would totally recommend following Dahlia. Um, her stream is amazing. If you want to know what's really going on in places like Seattle, instead of the bullshit you're going to hear from uh, the True. news, the mainstream news, uh, Dahlia is your source right here. So, True. Highly recommended. Um, Senpai Chow. Hey, I'm Senpai Chow. I stream politics and take an approach of looking at the philosophy, the theory, and the science. On stream, I read a lot of academic journal articles and test slash spread ideas via debates and panels. Nice. Based. And uh, Breakfast Detective, uh, we, we kind of caught you in the middle of a move, but you were gracious enough yeah. to uh, drop by anyway. How's it going? How's the new place? It is always great to be here. Uh, thank you for having me. As you can tell from this view of my ceiling, um, it's yeah, well we lit. Good guests today. Uh, but aside from that, uh, it's going well. Um, I'm in the process of trying to get everything unboxed, but also setting up a studio behind the house. So it's kind of like Live unboxing. a little wishy-washy all over the place. It should be good. I'm Breakfast Detective. I'm a IRL communist. Um, I like real good shit. I like democracy. I like freedom. I like liberty. Um, I like taking all of those things to the logical extreme and saying, hey, this world's kind of fucked up. I focus on politics. I do a lot of uh, Yay, like key. feel good content. I'm a Buddhist that informs my streaming um, uh, style, but also my uh, personal perspective on the world. And if there's Breakfast anyone that I'm here to show really for, cool. it's Irene. I hope everyone in the chat is uh, following. It's still September. It's never been cheaper based. to support your favorite creators. If you have, if you're already subbed and you like somebody in chat and you're like, man, I really like seeing this person hanging out and at in their comments, 
Give him a sub. I really um, like if you're not entertained, very uh, and very feel free to solve person. me in the chat. Uh, but other than that, thank you for having. Uh, it's still going to be about a week until Good we're guests. live over yep. here, so 100%. I'll post a big announcement for that on Twitter. Uh, and then after we're all done, if you still like me, then then I'll give you my Twitter after our talk. Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Breakfast Detective, you are based as fuck and one of our favorite uh, people to to have around. Um, so what we're dealing with this week, what kind of hit us, a lot of us, like a ton of bricks, um, was something go. that we were hoping wouldn't be a story until January, February, at least. Right, and that is that um, the, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, Supreme Court Justice, um, as know. a lot of people have pointed out, not exactly an ally on a lot of issues you know there, there's you know like but but uh, on another you know real um level kind of like the, the 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 thing that was holding us out of um you know shit like uh revisiting roe v wade in, in a way that might affect um you know massively affect the way that abortion yeah, it's is wild um, boycott you know practiced in the, the u.s um download. rb uh, RBJ. Why do I want to say RBJ? LBJ? Okay. Anyway, RBG was like kind of like, you know, our um, uh, sort of like the last um, vestige of the old uh, liberal Supreme Court that was that was still sort of left and still sort of, you know, holding us out of that pit. Um, once Trump has the new um, justice confirmed, and I don't think there's any way to stop that. Right, I, I, like I, if there if there is somebody That's on this true, panel, let me know and, and give me some give me give me some hope, even if it's false hope. Right, um, it's probably something that like Schumer and Pelosi could do, but they won't do because they're like, oh no, but that would violate precedent. W meanwhile, the Republicans are just violating precedent like left and right. But, um, you know, that's how our politics works. The Republicans are the Harlem Globetrotters. They're the home team. And the Democrats are the Washington generals. They are paid a lot of times to pretend like they're fighting, but to actually, you know, kind of give up. It, it, a lot of this is like, uh, you know, pro wrestling. Um, the way that our uh, the way that our politics works, but yeah, that's the that's the thing that's you know kind of happening. And any solutions there are for the Dems as far as the court going forward are solutions that are a little bit longer term. In other words, you'd have to do uh, what Roosevelt never did and pack the court or somehow hey, you know, change here. the oh, laws. Yeah. Um, you know, it's going to require um, a majority in the house the senate maybe even a super majority um it's not an easy road there are things that can be done but they're things that are democratic oh, are democratic i act like they're our party they're not right they're they're the corporate party but they you know they're better than the republicans um there's oh, no, um it, you know it's gonna be a hard road to like keep this from just becoming um essentially a, a trump court uh, at this point um and uh, it's it's sucked the wind out of a lot of people's sails. Like we're, we're, we haven't been like really hopeful. Twenty twenty has been a bust so far, but this one was a real was one uh, one bust that we we kind of maybe we're, we're hoping not to deal with quite yet. Uh, what do, what do people think? Yeah, um, I mean, I guess I have a couple things I could say about this. One is I, I think a lot of people there's a lot of um, understandable anger about the fact that, you know, um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg didn't step down in the past when it would have been more strategically um, ideal, where it would have prevented this from happening in the first place. Um, but I, I've been sort of urging my chat to, like, not get too fixated on the past and to deal with the current. Um, for people who are interested in what's actually possible for the Democratic Party to do, um, apparently, um, I haven't yet read Rashida Tlaib's um, I don't know if I'm saying her last name correctly. I apologize if I mess it up, but, um, Tlaib, um, put out a email about their tactics that they're looking to go forward. Apparently that's very good and relatively easy to get your hands on. Um, and then also David Sirota, um, who was part of the Bernie campaign also did a big write up on what tactics are actually possible. And it looks like there are some, um, tactics that, that will allow, um, sort of, uh, obstructivism, um, if, if, uh, you want to call it that from the democratic party, if they're willing to engage in them, mm -hmm. um, but there's no guarantees right now. And I think that's, um, understandably put a lot of people in a, uh, a relatively, uh, a position of feeling rather doomer. Um, yeah, and especially considering that there's been such reticence on the part of the democratic leadership to buck any sort of trends, despite how much the Republicans are bucking, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I think one of the um, one of the problems that uh, we have here in American politics is um, that a lot of uh, people, like a lot of liberals, have inherited the idea um, from from the Democratic Party that like, oh, you can play this sort of we go high while they go low thing when that's just simply not how politics works in this country. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think people are sort of waking up to that right now. And I think it's important for people to um, not go from a position of, oh, damn, we've been um, we've been fooled. We've been like ripped off. And obviously the, the Republicans were never going to hold to their honor. And I guess that means we lay down and, and just give up and instead say, wait a minute. No, this is the time now to be pushing harder for the types of reforms um, that we need to actually change this country um and and there's a lot of ways that we can approach that it's going to be a tough fight um we're looking at a very rough um five weeks uh at the very least possibly much longer than that um but i would urge people to um take the time that you need to catch your breath um but realize that this is the time where we need the most voices engaging in politics um ever than any other time because a a, a six three majority on the supreme court is not good for our country but um at the end of the day it is the people that determine um the legitimacy of of any government action and so if we can organize ourselves and our and a, a, a political movement of the people um we have the right to say hey um this is not a legitimate move. This is not right. This is this is an an unethical and immoral move that's hurting the people of the United States, and we can push for that sort of thing. So I would urge people to not give up. It is the worst time to give up. You keep fighting. Take the rest you need, but keep fighting. Yeah. So like, um, I think what the what the calculation is is that the Democrats are still kind of um, you know, calibrating their strategy. As if there was like um, there was a like a referee watching. Do you know what I mean? Like the idea is that like look, all right, they're they're breaking the rules, they're being bad, but there's somebody watching up above, and as long as we let that up above, you know, uh, objective observer, which is supposed to be the media, I think that's what they're thinking of. It's like the old school, like you know, NBC, ABC, C, like they're living in 1975 or something like that, right? And, and they think that there's this like arbiter that's going to come in that's going to be uber powerful and that's just going to give it to them and be like, look, these are the good people. They were following the rules. These are the bad people. They weren't following the rules. And the public's going to be like, oh, I like good people. And that's right. how shit used to work in the boomer days. But those days are fucking over and they're not coming back. Yeah. This, this change into Trumpism, it's not like a temporary blip. It's a place that we've been headed for a long time. And, um, you know, changing the course of the ship of state at this point, um, you know, is not going to be easy, is not going to be clean, is going to look really messy. And like Demon Mama said, if there's going to be anything that's going to stop the Republicans from taking over this court, you know, ostensibly for the gener for a generation, it's if no the Democrats chick. won't do anything She's about amazing. it, it's going to be public Irene. outcry. It's going to be people out in the streets letting the Republicans know that if you're going to govern the country like this, the co country is going to become ungovernable for you. That's the only thing 100%. that will save us. And, uh, you know, Chad, I hate to be fucking doomer, but I haven't seen that from the American people. No, I won't. Lately. Don't worry, Rakasan. So, uh, I yeah. Be that. So I think like, I know for a lot of people who don't think in this terms, it sounds kind of pie in the sky. And I'm sure in some regards that it is. But, you know, I think something that a lot of us need to consider earnestly and think about what we can do as far as participation. You know, a lot of people think, you know, what can I do aside from vote? You know, and the one thing I would say is, especially in times when you feel powerless, especially in times when you feel like your voice is not heard, especially in times when you feel like you want to make a difference and your ability to do that is, is being neutered and is to be curtailed significantly, you know, this is the exact perfect time to join an organization like the SRA, like the DSA, like the IWW. You know, this is a time to unionize your workforce. This is a time to talk to your coworkers and say, how can we band together? This is a time to knock on elderly neighbors' doors and say, hey, can I get your medication for you? I have a couple of free hours tonight, right? To do those real neighborly mutual aid actions that will make a direct right. difference in people's lives. You know, so I think eventually, you know, from my point of view, I would like to see dual power structures 
where we have other elected bodies that can directly help us in our lives. If Congress isn't going to, and if voting for Congress is not going to make a significant difference in our lives, then there have to be people out there who can talk, uh, who, who can speak to our issues and direct and organize aid to us that'll make a significant difference. I think we have plenty of examples of people being able to band together and do this themselves. So I think like if there's any silver lining here is that it's never been a better time to get to know your neighbors and your apartment building or your cul-de-sac or your city or wherever you live. You know, it's never been a better time to join, join an organization and people out there want to help. Right. So like let's band together. Yeah, but stay away. Like stay safe. Yeah, stay out. safe. Yeah. Six Wear a mask. Face. Wear a mask, but also uh, don't trust anyone. It's like going, I I mean, I didn't go to college, but I imagine like for my friends uh, who went to Rutgers, which was like the STD capital of colleges at some point, um, don't just trust someone. No, he's If wrong, they're like, oh, it's out. fine. I haven't been hanging out with anyone. You don't know. If someone's going to be unprotected with you, who else have they been unprotected with? Hey, thanks for the follow. I'm just saying. True, Life true, advice. True. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, uh, wear, uh, you know, use condoms, uh, people. Um, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, what to do about the Supreme Glory Court? Holes. Everybody wrap it up. Hey, Lynn, happy to Glory see you. Glory holes are apparently... There we go, six uh, feet away. Yeah, yeah. glory holes with the, the, the six feet. The six feet <laughs> I don't know. That's, uh, that's how you... I have no, no it's all about the hands there. free, you know what I'm saying? Hands free. No, no, no. Just the tip. I think you're safe, right? As long as um, it's just the, I've been told. I, I was told by. Uh, I know. have been told. This I know too. Me too, right? Yeah. As a preview, just a. Oh pre God, it's just a God. preview. Literally, someone tried to convince me once. Like, uh, what? Like, you know, a preview. What? No. I'm not going. Why am I or talking like, about like that? If you keep your un, if you're, if, if like one of you has your underwear sort of on, like you, you can't, like pregnancy can't happen or something. <laughs> yeah, there's all these like um, rumors, but yeah, yeah, I know. In terms of uh, you know social distancing, like bre uh, Breakfast Detective was uh, talking about. Oh my God! Yeah, I mean, this is like the worst time. I feel like everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm really starting to see the effects of the lockdown on people. Um, you know, on my on my fellow streamers and stuff, and on just people in, in general. And um, oh god, I don't god. know. I, I I feel like it's a hard time to talk to people. It's a hard time to like try to like ring that bell and get people um, activated. But uh, you know, I mean, there's there's I guess like the anxiety alarm has been god rung too many Ozzie. times. You know, <laughs> like. Uh, and and now people are just kind of like if you tell them like whoa whoa big problem get here right now this is really bad shit going on really bad shit they're like oh what is it that, you know they, they like roll out of bed and they're really slow and they're like okay they, they, they it's hard to take this shit seriously when there's been so right. much uh in 2020 so much of it has just been like a uh, five alarm fire one of and the things point... i tell people pretty frequently um on my stream is that uh and of course, you know, there's no, you can make no promises in times like these. There's no guaranteed success. But I always tell people that, um, that, uh, stuff like what we're going to be talking about today on this panel, stuff like the Supreme Court, uh, like this, this, this Trump coup stuff that he's, where he's saying, oh, I'm not going to accept a peaceful transfer of power, blah, blah, blah. Um, that these things are incredibly expensive ventures for them to um, undertake. They're incredibly difficult. They require an unbelievable amount of propaganda, an unbelievable amount of money. And as a result, there's actually quite a lot of hope in the majority of people resisting these things. Um, we may not all be able to do um, great heroic acts. However, we can all do a little bit. And the and systems like this, these huge, expensive, bulky, um, hierarchical systems that are being constructed um, are very hard to maintain. And as it turns out, they may be completely unmaintainable over a certain period of time. So I always try to try to tell people that there is quite actually quite a lot of hope if you look through history at regimes that have attempted to do things like this, at, at historical precedent for people to come together care for one another and buoy each other through the hard times and that these um these highly expensive highly authoritarian um 
pushes can't always maintain themselves. They can't always keep their own zealotry going in the same way that all of us, like, like what Irene said, where people might roll out of bed and just feel tired and like, oh, it's the 10th, it's the 10th crisis of the year. I mean, keep in mind that they have to do the exact same thing that, 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 Trump is relying on the fervency of his base, on this absolute zealotry, and that is a hard thing to maintain for a long time. It is very uh, difficult hmm. to maintain that level of fer fervor for a long time. So meeting constant, perpetual resistance from what is undeniably the majority of the country who does not agree with Trump um, is actually a very important tactic, and I think that we can gain a lot from, um, from keeping that in mind. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel you there, Demon Mama. I'm a little bit worried, though, because the thing that the Trump people have that we don't have is a religion. Now, mm -hmm. QAnon has become a fucking religion. QAnon is like the thing that's giving a lot of them meaning at this point. And, you know, the reason that we're having so much trouble, like deprogramming people from stuff like QAnon is that like when we give them something to, you know, like it's it's like they have QAnon and their, their arms are wrapped around this like rancid body pillow that's like you know, causing their skin to break out and turning them into monsters or something like that. And, not, and you're like, no, 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 no. Put down that body pillow, pick up, like, here's here's my worldview, take this instead. And they're like, but your worldview doesn't include any easy answers for all the problems of life. And this one does. And I'm not going to let go of this body pillow. And, uh, yeah. you know, there, there's a the real concern there as far as, um, you know, that they do have a way to activate and keep people being activated that, that, that we don't really, you know, um, have any way to touch. You know what? You know what? Subscribe to, okay, use, don't use your real email, but like, if you just subscribe to Trump's emails, like, uh, his email blasts, they're so, they're so ridiculous. Really, it's like talking to children, but it works. It really works, and uh, I think we need to do basically the exact same thing. We need to do what they've been doing forever, which is just say, no, we're we're going to do this other thing. And, no, and just I not act like it's in... Hold on, hold on. I grew up with these people. I know, I know them. I know if there's... That's the only thing I know is Fox News and, and all that bullshit. Uh, and people that are good people who voted for Trump because they're single issue voters because they are like religious or they do care about this one thing or they ha are brainwashed or whatever. Um, and, you know, think protests or riots and shit. Um, what that one thing is abortion, um, largely when you're talking my about, like, parents, caring about the Supreme yes. Court. Yeah. My parents, so a, a million percent, they like took me to the, in I do like, too, the nineties when too. I was a, like a little kid to the march for life time. like giant thing in dc like it's really they people really really care about getting rid of abortion even though you can't is, get rid Seglin. of abortion it so it's it's kind of like i think so, that we need to do an relenting force i don't just think like i i know if we look it's we're still so close always to not having like any like legal safe abortions and or at least people aren't ha having access to it and how long has it been 30 minutes, yeah um Iko, so the the place i really need to push back on you is that 55 percent of americans don't participate in national politics up to 70 percent of americans don't participate in local politics so the issue that right. i see is not how to how to get conservatives on our side the real oh issue i don't i, I agree is, yeah yeah no, that's totally. not what i was Let saying at all that was so, the opposite of I gotta what i was turn, saying uh, i gotta turn okay um, so what I'm thinking so is no that there back. are, there's 50 points, uh, there's 50% of, of voters who, uh, what was going to say, they don't participate in politics. We need to give them something to vote for. You know, I think that's number one. We need to give them something to believe in. That's number two. Yeah, and I think okay. when we want to talk about politics, it Let cannot just be a zero sum game of up. who wins and who loses. Cause then we're looking too short, short sighted. And obviously yeah, the short term no, is really not, important. And I get no. that but for me. When I think about engaging in politics, I want to educate people. I want people to become better critical thinkers. I want them right. to become True. engaged and optimistic. So I think when we talk about how to appeal to voters, it has to be so much more than just using that language, um, right? Some tension, yeah. Well, that's not at all what I was saying. Um, but, okay, so what I was saying is that we have to not give a shit again. Like you said, uh, we're not trying to convert conservatives. Like you said, there are a lot of people who are not engaged, 
for various reasons. I think reasons, they've debated a few and times we all in the past. Do our work, right? Um, yeah. The point is, however you do your work, do it unrelentingly yeah. and don't act like it's an option because it's not an option. Because the things that we are trying to do are human rights shit. Like, we know that we're right. There's not a possibility of like, oh, is it, are people equal? Should they be equal? Mm -hmm. No, we know that we're fucking right. So it is what it is. Uh, the, the the other thing I wanted to touch on what Irene said earlier, <clears throat> um, you know, people get burnt out by this. A lot of people that I've been talking to recently, I had a, I had a tweet about this the other day. A lot of people who, who, who I talk to are like, I am so burnt out by politics that I almost just want to check out of the whole thing. And I think like, you know, when we're all doom scrolling on, on Bird app or like whatever, like I think the one thing that we have to like consciously remind ourselves of and be mindful of are all of the things that like breathe life back into us, that refill us, that reinvigorate us. Because inevitably, like if our movement Ooh. is not going to be focused on things that actually make people feel better about themselves and like we need to do some yeah. self-reflection, right? But so there's more. I think we're going to talk about more of that of, like, in a For bit, me, it's not always right. politics. When I get burned out by politics, you know, like I might like call a friend. I might play a video game. I might drink a beer. Um, I might do all different kinds of things, but to do it with the intention that it's just like, okay, True. I'm whew, seen. You know what I mean? Well, that's another thing. There are a couple, there are a couple, I think, uh, dangerous like places that you can fall into, which is one, making it about how you feel because how you feel is irrelevant. And if you try to uh, like base things on like do you feel like your work is is worthwhile and going well or whatever like yes absolutely people <laughs> need to take care of themselves twitter is not doing like reading twitter is is doing nothing uh basically like yeah we have to know what's going on but we don't we don't it's it's our choice how how frequent yeah self care that right. stuff but also i think that we have to uh like not there's a temptation to feel like we've completed something when we haven't actually done anything and then we stop right. doing things as fervently um so right. Right. That I wanted as to... a participant of this panel i kind of want to backtrack to the actual topic of talking about rbg as well as the supreme court uh what i want to add are possibly some of the areas in which we could be optimistic about where the silver linings in these dire circumstances so i've already accepted sure. that we are in the circumstances that we are in rdbj has passed away the RBG. senate is a republican majority graham is the head of the senate judiciary committee they are definitely going to be planning on hardballing in, oh, yeah. in very short amounts of time 100%. on getting another conservative judge that makes it a 6-3 lead. Now, who are these judges that could possibly be the ones appointed? Uh, Trump is going to be announcing that tomorrow, and hey, the rumors uh, point the to follow, Barrett. So Happy and to you. the Welcome thing about the Barrett, though, is that it's a very poor choice when it comes to strategy. So uh, as what Demon Mambo was saying, uh, Trump likes to revitalize or not revitalize uh really rile up his base and barrett is the supreme court judge to do that but the other option that a lot of senators in both democrats and republicans because the senator not the senator this judge has a lot of experience has a good backstory their her family has fled from fidel castro cuba has overwhelming support from both democrats and republicans as well as is from florida so this could affect the election. But Trump is choosing not to choose Lagoa. This is the person choosing not to choose Lagoa and instead choose Barrett. And the, a choice of Barrett would actually, in my analysis, would get Democrats as well as independents to further dislike Trump, all for the sake of Trump just riling up his base. It's actual self-sabotage in my views. So like... A 6-3 Supreme Court in the future, yeah, the Supreme Court so far has like 40 plus years of consecutive conservative majority. This is going to be extended by further generations. But in the short term slash midterm, Trump is probably going to be getting out of office in November. 
I think oh that's God. a little wishful thinking, but I hope so. I, I there was a couple things I wanted to to comment on there, if possible. Um, the the first the first thing was I did want to comment on what no no comment chick had said about um, QAnon, and um, I can't recommend enough. Um, uh, Dan Olson, also known as Foldable Ideas, video on Flat Earth and uh, QAnon. Um, and it talks about how um, QAnon is following sort of the curvature of many other sort of doomsday doomsday cults that have come before it. And that um, there are a lot, there are a lot of internal problems um, to movements like QAnon. Um, and this isn't to deflate their concern. The thing is, these groups tend to do a lot of damage, but they don't they're not able to last very long. And that's one of the big concerns because as we can see, um, there's so much inconsistency in the messaging within QAnon. There's so many different factions within QAnon. There's so many grifters, just outright grifters who are willing to lie or say anything that these inconsistencies build up and um, people start to lose hope in their own thing. And then they believe they have to um, force whatever thing, whatever um, goal they're going to happen. Like, for example, there's been a number of predictions um, from Q that have just been flat out wrong. And even, and, and while some people might be able to look past those, many of them cannot. And what this can lead to is to uh, premature action on their part, thoughtless action, um, strategy that doesn't actually help them accomplish their goals and instead deflates their movement before, you know, before it would have otherwise sustained itself. So I think that's something to keep in mind that um, QAnon is not, um, QAnon does not have the resilience of, say, evangelical Christianity. Um, it doesn't have the resilience of, say, the Catholic Church. It is not a, um, it is not this, like, highly evolved meme. It is a, a desperate, um, grasping thing. Um, and right. yeah, so but I it's think it's an evolution, like yeah. it's a part, like it's not like you can still be evangelical and like, like, uh, you don't even have to be like super QAnon. You can just be like, I don't know. Like that's, you know, like people oh, who are course, trained to believe like that's, that's the whole, <laughs> the entire base completely people who can be completely logical in most areas of their lives will just like fall off a cliff because they trained themselves to compartmentalize certain things because they needed it this way for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, I, I mean, think and, that, and there's, I think there's some Astero, truth in that. Astero actually called um, QAnon a syncretic religion. And what those are, are religions um, which don't, you know, seek to say like, oh, other religions are evil. You know, we can never, um, you know, have anything to do with them. They're religions that are kind of like add-ons, right? And um, that's how QAnon works. Jesus, is that it, it, it's tongue, it's kind of like an rather than you know trying to supplant uh, evangelical Christianity. And there are QAnon churches, right? Um, that that that's a phenomenon that 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 has sort of risen up. But like, um, it's it. What I would say, Demon Mama, is I want to believe you. But I'm afraid that QAnon is the blob that absorbs evangelical Christianity, that absorbs traditional Catholicism, that absorbs some of these like, you know, really pernicious, um, stubborn movements that are holding our country back from, for example, like sex ed. That's the common example. Like, why don't we have better sex ed? And the answer is, is because there's some people on the oh, ultra boy. right that are uncomfortable with even kids being taught the basics. So, you know, the kind of sex ed that we actually need, the kind of comprehensive discussion of consent and that kind of stuff you know it, it can't happen because of these groups and i'm afraid that that QAnon has just like been able to like you know kind of absorb like some kind of anime um you know uh, monster uh, has just like you know put out its tentacles and absorbed all these uh movements well it's it's interesting because i i think that QAnon is is sort of um very very good at this um i would say for sure um, and perhaps even uniquely good at it, but we, it's not like we haven't seen these types of movements in the past. I mean, Pizzagate, Gamergate, all, Wait, all acted on the same ones. These, and, these are all things they have absorbed though. I but, think of Gamergate yeah. as, but there as are existing other, inside of, uh, QAnon at this point. But there are a couple of other things that are in, that are important to note, which is, um, uh, and, and one that I'll point to an, um, an example of this is the, uh, 2012 end of the world, um, like doomsday cult which became incredibly yeah. popular probably more popular i would say realistically more popular even than um than um something like pizzagate at least at its time i'm sure QAnon has probably surpassed it in some degrees the problems though is that a lot of these movements end up 
making really, really big promises in order to continue to escalate the fervor. And those promises cannot possibly be delivered on. For example, what's going to happen when um, Donald Trump Either if either Donald Trump wins or doesn't win, there is no way he is ever going to deliver on the promise that QAnon says he's going to. He's never going to round up. There's never going to be some big reveal of the cabal. And that is going to break the spirit of a lot of people in there very badly. Now, some of those outcomes might be terrible. Some of those people might become full on accelerationists or violent cells or whatever. But the reality is they can't keep going on perpetuating QAnon once... Um, once it engages in that. And that's the, that's one of the big issues with these sorts of like doomsday cult things is that they, they do have a limited lifespan and they yeah. can't be capitalized on forever. Um, that's not true. I um, mean, there, 2012 is very different because like uh, when like living in New York City, like they, this this man uh, got millions of dollars to do this ad campaign in the subways, right? Like we didn't have the accessibility to people the in 2012 the way that we do now things can live infinitely and get absorbed into other stuff like it it really is just uh it's it's a lot easier that may be true i just think that we should analyze QAnon for what it is which is a doomsday conspiracy cult and recognize its weaknesses and seek to uh, uh, seek to exacerbate those weaknesses um and inoculate people to it because the yeah. thing is is that i think a lot of people this is this is this is something that again a lot of this is informed by my own experiences um coming out of an extreme religion i go again you and i have a very similar background in that regard i grew up in a very very extreme cult um and um and the thing is that that um stuff like christianity are they're, they have huge doctrinal advantages over stuff like QAnon. They have it like literally thousands of histories of lore that they can pull on to self-perpetuate, and QAnon simply doesn't have that. Now, will some? Is it likely that there will be some form of QAnon or whatever that will perpetuate itself? Absolutely, and I do think that it's very, very dangerous in certain ways. For example, I think the I would be willing to estimate very, very highly um, that the chance of stochastic terrorism from a group like QAnon is probably incredibly high. We're likely to see that very soon. If I mean, we've already seen some of it. But, so we've um, already seen it, yeah. Yeah, we have. But I don't know. Um, I wouldn't like. I wouldn't ascribe the same value um, to QAnon that I would to say the evangelical right, um, which is this like highly regimented, highly doctrinal um um highly adapted um religion that is still relevant in american politics and still needs to be paid attention to and also it's really funny but the the evangelical like the evangelical block of the right wing in america is responsible for perpetuating most of these conspiracies even back to the satanic panic which has a lot of similarities to QAnon. Oh yeah. So I major. think I think studying those things and recognizing the way that they function is actually is actually really really important. So it's not that I don't agree like dis that I disagree with the danger of these things. I just don't know that it's um it's appropriate to compare them directly to like a religion because while they do offer an alternative worldview, it's like uh it's like it's like a it's like eating sugar cubes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It can be addicting, but it doesn't actually give you. You're gonna run out of nutrients eventually. I see what you're saying. Wait, you though. still get see, both, I... though. You can have like all of it. You can still hold have your religion and your your weird cult shit. Yeah, I, would, that... I just like I personally, when it comes to QAnon, like this is just. I, I'm, I'm not I'm not really basing this more on anything but my personal opinion. So you can take this for you know whatever or nothing. Um, but I can't help but see the rise in popularity of an organization or movement, rather, like QAnon, as the kind of uh, death of like religiosity and spiritual practice in many mm -hmm. Americans. And it's not to say that like people should join a church, but it's to say that people's connection to their own ritualized spiritual practice, which we know is important for the human psyche, has been so kind of divorced and alienated out of people's lives. So one of the things that I talk about in a way to like kind of uh, like not defeat might be too strong of a word, but to make an impact in some of these people's lives is to uh, be that level of empathetic, uh, you know, hold that level of spirituality um, that may be secular, uh, that's uh, that a lot of people feel like is lacking in their lives, the community that they uh, yearn for, uh, that they feel is lacking. Um, and try to provide that in a in a way that you know also reflects a lot of the things that we believe in. So 
when we talk about QAnon, mm -hmm. I just I, I can't help but feel like maybe the solution here is a little counterintuitive. And maybe the solution is just for us to uh, like reach out and like be empathetic as much as we have energy to and as much as possible and try to fill the void that I think a lot of people feel and experience. Epic 87, 87, 87 says friendship evangelism. Yeah, no, I, I kind of like, I, I, I think I like where you're going with this uh, breakfast detective, that we need something that's sort of on the line. Um, QAnon, like Demon Mama was pointing out, has not stood the test of time in the same way that like evangelical Christianity or any of these other components, I guess you could call them now of, of QAnon and maybe they're temporary components. Um, have so there is the, there is the chance that it has structural flaws that we haven't exploited yet and 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 you know that's a, a good idea but what breakfast detective is kind of getting at is that like QAnon fills a hole in people's lives right now that the left maybe isn't doing as good of a job as it could in filling that the left in the past has been able to fill through you know if you look at the American like union movement uh, a lot of that was carried by singer songwriters you know, who would who would travel from town to town and sing about the union. And when they sung about the union, they weren't just talking about some fucking goddamn organization. They were talking about the union of us. They were talking about the union of our hearts. They were talking about uh, Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. No, just kidding. Um, but they were talking about, um, you know, they were they were appealing to that, you know, part of us that they, they were get, they were feeding people um, in terms of like uh, on, on like almost like a soul level, a psyche uh, level. And I want to, you know, like for anybody who's like an atheist and is feeling like this is getting a little woo and, you know, like, well, are we going to bust out liberation theology um, next? I mean, I think there is a way to conceive of these things as an atheist, as an ag I still consider myself an agnostic, but I, I, I do see um, stories as having power, as having a way to connect with a part of our mind that maybe the cerebral, you know, kind of um, mullings don't quite uh, get to. And, and, and I feel like that, um, you know, you don't have to believe in some like, you know, supreme being or, you know, some sort of a, a soul level or, you know, some of the stuff that atheists really reject. Um, but what you do have to believe in is, is, is like your heart yeah. is, is like, you know, the core yeah, of your, exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. You need a narrative and you need like, um, you need the right vibe. Yeah. You just I, like, well, like you need a reason why you're like still moving and what direction you're pointed at, regardless Absolutely. of like whether it's a you know helpful or not helpful to you. Um, but there, like people will. Yeah, you're right. To send me uh, that check. I I mean there are yeah, a bunch of can. different reasons why why that happens, but there there are some people who are a lot more vulnerable than others, and I think that like. Um, I think I think that like for people who haven't uh, really engaged with a lot of people who are really religious um, and not like in a secular way, I don't know. Just understand that there are people that believe <laughs> crazy enough, shit for real, and they're not reasonable. They're yeah, just not. I, I think that's they're true. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people who are. I mean. I don't want to say unreachable. That sounds bad, but they're functionally unreachable at this point in time. And that is just something we have to um, deal with. However, mm -hmm. I do think that there is great value in inoculating people um, to stuff like QAnon, which statistically, as far as what we do know about QAnon, tends to prey on older, very lonely, very isolated people. Um, often in rural America. And I think there are ways to appeal to that same yearning in a lot of people and offer community and offer togetherness um, in a way that doesn't funnel people into this sort of um, continually isolating um, like path full of grifters, which yeah. is really what it is. Like a lot of the QAnon, like the people who are perpetuating QAnon now are, are just using this as a way to funnel money off of people in a way they think is harmless or don't care but it is actually very harmful and it doesn't actually offer again it's like the sugar cubes it doesn't actually offer that um sustainable um togetherness and i do think that that's one of the things that evangelicalism for all of its flaws does offer to a lot of people it offers real sense of community a church that you can go to even if it's toxic in some ways it's much yeah. more solid um and i don't know um i do think it's a tough question and i i certainly think it's going to be a big part of what we're looking at going into this um going into this election year well 
Well, I'd say that in addition to like QAnon adherents, there are also, you know, um, kind of like much cash enablers, facilitators, if you will. Like and that. a lot of those facilitators are the about how it affects They the are making some right amount now. of money. Now, Mix Vivian, uh, last time she was here, pointed out that there's nobody that's kind of like in, uh, you know, at the control of QAnon. None of the grifters are like powerful enough to be like the force that moves QAnon, but they are important in sort of maintaining. And the reason that QAnon is so appealing to these people is because, you know, these are cynical people that don't really give a damn, uh, you know, much about other, anything other than, you know, grifting, right? But they, they also, when they see QAnon, they see a bunch of people being shown 2 plus 2 equals 5 yep, and, then we're gonna talk and about signing their names other stuff. below. It's a really and been, when you see that, great panel if so you're far. a grifter, that is like mana. That is like sugar. That That is like the, that's the nectar that attracts you, right? So they're, they're there and they're, I, I think, doing something, you know, to help sort of maintain these um, communities. But like Vivian said, no single grifter is powerful enough to be able to, you know, it's, it's not like we're saying that these people are like the invisible brain. Um, maybe together they form some sort of neural network, but you know, no one, um, one of these, you know, grifters is, 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 you know, is determining the course of the ship of, uh, of Q. Yeah, but I... isn't Q, like there's no cent center person, right? So it's like not really. an amorphous, it's basically God. Yeah, like, I mean, it, but like, that also yeah, means, God, a, and I will just point God. out and highlight that that means that this is a um, a movement that's um, very likely um, or very easy to. Uh, I don't want to say easy, but it's possible to disrupt when you when it's all anonymous. And you saw this happen with stuff like GamerGate and PizzaGate as well, where um, it the, the 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 popular figures and the leaders go. Uh, they, they, they change by the month because it's whoever it happens to be the most dominant and interesting at the moment. And I think that there's room for skilled individuals um, to signal jam the hell out of QAnon. Yeah, if, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, so that's something for anybody out there with that sort of skill set to keep in mind that, uh, you know, QAnon is not exactly the most, um, it is not an organization that, that, um, that values verification. It is not a an organization. It is all emotionally based. And if you can tap into that and direct it in a different direction, I do think it would be possible to jam that signal to a degree. So are you talking about people doing stuff? Like I've seen people posting something like that Q is like, what was it? Like they, they were like basically turning the accusations of uh, QAnon uh, over onto, you know, Q, whoever the mysterious figure that may, uh, like, like many religious figures may not actually exist, right? It, well, it may be more of a, a composite, uh, of, of, of several figures. Yeah, the Q, like, Q itself is like, I mean, the guy, the, the person Q doesn't really, like, again, doesn't exist. In fact, there was a, 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 there's a number of times where the, um, sort of consistency of the Q character has changed completely. I mean, when they ch when when QAnon jumped from 4chan to 8chan, there's no way to know if it's the same Q who took over yeah, um, and on then 8chan. Really and doing, this has happened yeah. multiple times. There have been a loss of, of continuity among this Q character um, multiple times. And there have been times where there's conflicting Qs. And that, to me, ind indicates that this is a this is not a very organized um, thing and that it's very unstable internally. Again, I don't know. This is like... Um, like dealing with that is not my specialty. I have some um some experience, you know, having grown up in a cult and and learning a lot about religion and learning a lot about cults. Um but I think it's something that we should think about. And also, um I know we've di we've gone a little bit off from the original topic of talking about the Supreme Court. Um but I do think this is important and it will impact um the way things go. Um recognizing that at the end of the day, um Q is a very vocal minority, a a very vocal hyper minority um yeah. there are not like there's a lot of q people by comparison to other um movements like q but at the can end I of the day can yeah. i ask you real quick gaming mama do you know if QAnon is the same q movement as from 4chan from like a few years ago there was like a there was a poster that was like claiming to be q yeah yeah it's, it's the, the same, same one right yeah it's the same, okay, it's so, the so same one how, i say that here's with how quotes, you would do yeah. it here's how you would do it you spoof the id tag of q and you post.
the trip code yeah um is that is that how it works on eight kun yeah so like like um uh demon mama was said trip saying code, yeah. it's it's it hasn't been there hasn't been continuity you know there's a lot that you can point to in terms of oh, like predictions that absolutely in fact you can point to a long line of predictions that haven't come true and somehow they're always able to retcon that shit into like oh but you know it was really q was uh q's plan is mysterious and we don't quite understand it and uh but we'll know you know when the when the true you know evil doers are revealed and everybody goes to jail but um Marcavius, i just realized uh we brought you on the panel we didn't give you a chance to uh introduce yourself so let me give you that uh, opportunity right now um who who you are uh what you're doing on twitch what you've got in the works and uh stuff like that yeah yeah, yeah. so i am subcommandante Marcavius of the antifa special forces uh, Don't I, say I, that out loud. No, it's it's okay. I, I was having discussions about this a little bit earlier. I'm really good at avoiding TOS now at this point. Nice. But uh, <laughs> what do you call? It? I, I That's number the kind one. Of guest I love to see. <laughs> so 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 like I love talking about like when is revolution uh, revolution actualizable? Um, how can we mitigate violence surrounding these things? Uh, like, what is the utilitarian argument for reform versus uh, revolution? What are the timelines that surround these things? I love talking about that, trying to do that in a way that doesn't, um, that doesn't like call to violence, because I feel like that those are questions that, re that are really important that we ought to talk about that, you know, like sometimes we need to be really careful with how we're talking about it, especially when we're approaching like things like foreign policy or or, or military doctrine, things that a lot of us as leftists don't know a lot about, that we can, though, default to leftists that do have experience with this. And I'm not specifically talking about Dylan Burns. For instance, I'm talking about like uh, left flank vets or just in general veterans that um, have turned into even centrists, you know, just not flag waving nationalists. Yeah, yeah I point. think so well, too. So everybody has that skill set. Yeah. Some internet for Java, right? Like, do, we, we do have like some veterans that like have joined, you know, the the fight uh, for people's liberation and. Um, so you know, even, it, even um even even the current commander of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has has stated that he's not going to abide by Trump staying in office. Um, when, oh when, yeah yeah yeah. When when. Do you remember that time when they used riot police to get uh, people out of uh, Black Lives Matter Square so Trump could do his photo op in front of the church? And then yeah. that military general was was walking with him. He, right. it, he was in uniform. That's actually against the uniform code of military justice to do any kind of partisan politics while in uniform or speak on partisan politics while in uniform. And he didn't know that he was going to be like basically recorded doing something partisan. Yeah. And after afterwards, he did a long dissertation about like a long, like 15 minute video about how it's wrong and how he made a mistake and how nobody should ever do that. And since then, he's been very vocal about how he's not going to let, to let the military be co-opted by Trump basically yeah, by yeah. the so executive it, branch. Th this uh, is something that maybe people, yeah, this is a silver lining that pe maybe people don't know about yet. But Trump has, um, yeah, I mean, like, we all know that Trump is, like, uh, just an asshole. And uh, assholes, you know, tend to piss people off and make enemies. And one of the enemies that he's made has been, over time, the military. You can look back to, like, when he was, like, calling John McCain a loser for getting shot down in Vietnam. The military people hate that kind of shit, right? You know, I mean, they might not like John McCain, but they're not going to, like, disparage his service because that's what they're all about is honor and service. And there's so many things that, like, you know, the, the military is all about decorum. Trump is pissed all over their decorum. So as a result, the military vote is not... It is actually up for grabs this year. That is a rarity. Usually Republicans have got that, um, you know, have, have got the preponderance of, of military people. Now it looks like, um, you know, Trump has, has actually done enough damage there. And it's not that like the military vote's gonna, you know, be the thing that boosts. Um, it might. Biden. See, here's the thing. But, yeah, but I think what's more interesting is if, if, if this is you true. know, these some of these like this red, um, the red uh, mirage, um, you know, scenarios actually manifest, and Trump does try to make a power play that the military might be the deciding factor. And in this case, you know, well, they better be. The, the yeah. thing is, they better be because we are a member of NATO. And one of the things that NATO members do for each other is help each other maintain effective governments. And if that stops happening in the United States, 
then we would have a coalition of the willing marching around, ensuring that uh, that a fair and honest election would happen the following year. Wait, uh, that's, are you talking about like NATO troops coming to the U.S. to... This is a worst case scenario wow. that I honestly don't think would okay, happen. That happens. Ever. But 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 let's say let's say the worst case scenario happens, right? Worst All this scenarios. shit that that actual action actual doomers are talking about actually Damn. goes down. We can so talk about that a little more. The comment in the streets, by and large, would not be between Afterwards. leftists Here, I'll, I'll and make government a note of this or so lefties and righties or anything like that. The comment in the streets most likely would be against counter revolutionaries and coalition forces supported by supporting United States troops, which would by and large be the majority of the military. Why do you think that? Oh my God. Because because we only have around 100, uh, like 100 million people that are voting Republicans. And out of those 100 million people, there's really not a lot of people, uh, just relatively, like millions of people we're talking about. So it's a lot of people, but relatively, it's not a lot of people to the rest of the population that would have the conviction of belief and uh, basically the intestinal fortitude to be able to engage in military operations. So the, usually when it comes down to people that Jesus are effective- Jesus right. so does not support that conclusion. Mm. Go ahead. That's all. Dolly. No, my experience just doesn't support that conclusion. Um, I don't know, you know, anyone's backgrounds about this kind of stuff like that. Obviously, I'm a veteran and spent Jesus you know, Christ, years alien in the military. Tongue. That's rough. A lot of families are broken up over this stuff. planning for exactly these sorts of things, um, low conflict insurgencies in foreign countries. Obviously, this is being uh, turned here to the United States. But nevertheless, low and low conflict insurgencies don't just peter out. Um, this is a, going to be a long-term sustained guerrilla conflict if Trump doesn't leave office, and it's going to involve our whole country. And I would be surprised if we don't find ourselves in Civil War Part Two by the summer if Trump doesn't leave office. I actually don't think that uh, the conflict would end, but I do think that a uh, progressive form of government could take hold. I, I think it's, it's... I was talking to Specter of Syndicalism about this a minute ago, and he and I both think the same way. It's kind of a coin toss on who would fill mm, the power vacuum, whether it be an extra fascist government or an extra progressive government. Yeah. Um, but, or or Democrats or Republicans after it all goes down. But I, mean, I, I don't think that the fighting would just stop, though. Go ahead. Um, I But the, the, yeah, the thing is, would... I guess even if he did uh, give up power some point like are whoever's in power are they going to be able to wrangle whoever is not happy with the ongoings of things still i i, I don't know i feel like it's if like effectively I, I the answer is no back, right and so i'm thinking too like people have often like i was talking to the battle lounge and and uh some other uh people last night um about you know like yeah trumpism uh, is really he, rough like he was saying that it's the, really divided like, a lot how of the military would like, like, turn on it its own people but i mean they're like you can definitely outsource for stuff like that too and i don't i don't know Th shit could be i don't know what civil war actually means if, if like when it crosses into civil war versus what it is now. Um, right now, I guess, like, it doesn't have to be that, like, uh, enough people stop being, like, quote unquote neutral or rather, like, like you know, the inability to not be engaged on one side of, or the other. I mean, I think that's one thing that touches on something that I think is really important, which is that um, I assume every single person here can agree on one thing is that we're all anti-fascist um maybe not in the big a way but in a lot of ways and i think that that's something the we, what way uh, I, I, oh in the big a way like antifa you know what i mean like, oh, oh, yeah. oh everyone oh, here i, I believe said, like big a, like like that was a uh 
a fancy word. If oh, no, anybody, no, no. if anybody was looking for somebody to target uh, for being like a leader in developing Antifa strategy and tactics, uh, feel free to target me, CIA Fusion Center. <laughs> The thing is, I think we can all agree that, um, that, I mean, damn near everyone I know on politics, um, Twitch on even YouTube abroad with a few exceptions, um, are, are at the very least anti-fascist and they don't, they don't believe that fascists are correct. Now there are some people like we have like big talking heads and whatever on the right who clearly are. Um, but I think that this is something that we can push more, which is that, uh, I think this is sort of the, the um oft discussed uh unity that we can discuss which is hey um this this donald trump is literally pushing for a power grab and now is the time if there's ever been a time to to decide on whether you are you know a actually going to resist fascism and and if you believe that we should not have these things happen again this is the time to be pushing that to all of our audiences to be telling people that hey like we need you need to pick a side and the two sides are people who don't want to live in a fascist um you know anti-democracy world and people who want to build something better than what we have right now and even if that we can disagree on the specifics we can all I, I think that many 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 people can agree that no we don't want to exist in this and that means the more people again i i point to this again the more people who are willing to take steps even small steps to resist this sort of thing pulling off um power grabs of this of this style are incredibly expensive and incredibly risky and we tip the scales in our favor for every person who recognizes that this isn't a left like so much a left right thing this is a do you want fascism or do you not want fascism and if you don't want fascism then you need to recognize that your allies are the other people who don't want fascism because that is what we are looking at that is genuinely what we are looking at here i don't think that's fascism. a so so let me let me just real quick like this is this is exactly what i was going to end up saying is that um there's there's way more anti-fascists than there are fascists in the united states however this is where the question of if we did a revolution would the violence that happened because of it be greater than the violence given a certain timeline from not doing a revolution so this I kind of want to can I, can I reframe this conversation a little bit. Um, so a couple things to kind of note here. Uh, who escorts the president out of office? It's not the military. It's the Capitol Police. The Capitol Police are beholden to Congress specifically, uh, not the mayor of D.C. or anything else. So the Capitol Police could theoretically put a hold and say, you know, at the direction of Congress, which is re Republican controlled, like, Let's take a pause. Let's see where things go. They could dispute the election for a while. We've had multiple presidents in the past 20 to 25 years or so, 20 to 30 years, even longer, you know, that have lost the popular vote and won getting into office. Right. Trump is a good example of that. So I think, um, you know, I don't necessarily know if the conversation about revolution is necessarily even useful here um, because we're not talking about revolution. We're talking about like a power struggle um More. and a complicit government right well the the thing is with we're not talking about just any election we're not talking about like deck like basically uh, before 2016 no one would have been able to like people didn't realize the power mm. that they had and told the you this was going to be an interesting that, discussion the thing that made them aware of that was the internet and now that we have that everything is different and now like just because uh, you know, the officials carry out what they're supposed to do. Like the narrative can be anything, whatever they people decide is convenient. It really doesn't matter. It's just a. I think it's more like an. It's it's a. It's a PR thing. Like there there we the strategy has to be, somehow there like people have to detach from like seeing trump as their guy i guess like in in all of these things it, hey, it's more Gio like dude, good um, to see you like Happy taking see making them these people look like they they are also what hey potato are plug, just for, noticed <coughs> is that strong authoritarian kind of leader even though they would never like people don't know what fascism is fascism is whatever they don't like whatever people think wearing masks is fascism you know like so it's it's um i don't know i don't i think that like logic for real people doesn't work on 
not that they're not real people but you know lot like real logic doesn't exactly work on on people who are willfully choosing something else over logic yeah but i mean i think there's room for um again uh, you know as we know most of the most of the population of America is is politically unmotivated. They are they are floating somewhere in the middle. And if we if we are able to it's about a third, I wouldn't say it's most. Well, okay, it's That's over right. half. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of people. Let's 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 agree on that. Non voters, can... you mean? What's that? Like non voters? Not just non voters. Fifty-five percent of people who, don't um... participate in national elections. Yeah. Yeah, like people oh, who wow. um people who aren't particularly politically motivated who may sort of just vote party lines or people who um, don't participate in the vote at all. I think there's a lot of people who fall into that category. And I think a lot of those people are receptive to learning and saying, wait a minute, like, I think for a lot of people for a long time, like this concept of fascism was this thing that happened in World War Two, and then it's gone. But I think it's very possible for us to go look there, like, this this happened for a reason during World War II. Look at how these things build. This has happened to other countries since World War II. This is how it builds. Here's the things in this country. And people can realize that. I think there is room for education to happen there and for people to go, yeah, I'm not on board with this. I'm really not on board with this. So I think that that's something that like, um, is really good for us as as being the sort of uh, I, I don't know I don't want to over over inflate any of our heads but being the influencer types we all have you know reasonably we have some audiences um, we can start to disseminate that information we can start to educate people and actually teach people so that people do know what it is so that people know what this is and what it looks like and uh, I think that um, part of that involves like recognizing that yeah there's probably some humps we need to get over with regard to people just hearing that word and um, going, oh, well, like that just sounds like, uh, I don't know. That sounds like a lot and going, no, wait a minute. It's a real, it's, this is a real thing that actually happens in real countries. And there's, and people are open to learning that stuff. Sometimes not all people are in the Q mindset where they have had these. Um, and I, I talked about this on a, on a stream recently talking about how, um, conspiracy mindedness has to be built up it has to be reinforced over a long period of time like um people don't just like instantly snap and become a QAnon or, or instantly snap and become a religious zealot it, they they become interested they become reeled in slowly and then these things are built up in their mind that resist that resist them to other ideas but we can not actually get in get our foot in the door before that happens we can sort of snip the line on the fishing pole so to say and i think part of that involves taking a very serious look at how we can most efficaciously educate people as to what these things actually are, what they look like in a way that makes sense to their lives and go, look at this. This is what's happened in the past. You, you, you might feel like the, the state of the world is, is so bad and that you're, you're being neglected by your government. Well, you are. And here's the reasons why here's the specific ways that these things work, um, to consolidate power, to do whatever. And if you're against that, join us in being against that. So I do think that there's a lot of hope in that, especially for people like us who are, um, you know, who are the educators in a certain way. We are the the talking heads of the the, the current generation, the, the, the Zoomers and the, the early millennials and more so than the news in a lot of ways. Yeah. So I was thinking while you were talking about that, that like a lot of it's going to come down to the optics of how the election goes, right? Like obviously if the ballots come in and it's like 75% Biden, 25% Trump, which I don't think is going to happen, it would be a lot harder for Trump to spin that. Whereas like if, you know, Trump wins and then the mail-in votes come in and then Biden wins, like it'll be easier for him to spin that as like you know, a fraudulent election. And I think it's going to come down to how other governing bodies take like Trump's spin on things, because for some reason, people like take his spins as like legitimate, right? Well, for some for, reason, I don't get it. Hey, but like for the follow. to the average Welcome person, the that follow. seems Happy real, right? Like when he spins you, it General, in a weird way, General the average American more so than we Nero think Medina. believes his spin and like his story, name. or at least is like, well, Welcome. there's two sides to this, right? Um, that could just be because I'm in like a conservative state. So I'm surrounded by that perspective all the time. Right. But, um, I don't know. I say that he represents something that in our society is given undue influence. And I wanted to get into this. I'm glad you gave me a segue um, that like, okay, so on one level, our conception of democracy is that hey. like, you know, votes in a, in, a, in a box, you know, equals democracy. Like, right. That like, you know, our pull as people on making our politicians do what we want is because we can vote them in, vote them out. Um, there's another level, you know, in which um, 
that is bodies like in the streets as in like, you know, people are willing to protest and, and disrupt, um, you know, things. Um, if the, you know, if, if something unreasonable is, is happening, um, and, um, you know, that's, uh, hello. you know, that, that's a more, Argentina. like, I guess, direct hello form of US. democracy. Um, but it also, <laughs> you know, requires some personal risk to people, you know, to, to do that. And then there's like a Republican level in which they conceive of, look, the white men have the power. The white men have the guns. Therefore, the white men's vote should count for more. Because if it really comes down to it, we'll take out those guns and and we'll, you know, enforce our will. Because in the end, like, you know, we might, they're, they're not really accepting the idea that they don't fully control things anymore. And that's what a lot of this, like Jordan Peterson, you know, MRA, M G MGTOW, I mean, that, that movement is huge. And like, it's, it's like the stereotype is like, it's a older divorced guy that like got <laughs> like his kids taken away from him in the oh, settlement man. or something, you know, that he didn't like in the divorce settlement. And um, this, this has been a weirdly radicalizing um, factor, but like, yeah, there's like a, a sense in which they really do believe in the patriarchy and, and they're almost like, you know, with the boogaloo shit, it's, it's like a willingness to enforce that um, upon, uh, upon other people. Yeah. So like, it's, it's like, there, there's, you know, the, the question, um, you know, then becomes like, you know, what do we do in the face of that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of right wing talking heads have been signaling for this type of, sh of, of stuff like this, this type of like, oh, second civil war stuff. But and 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 again, like a lot of this seems very premature to me, um, which, you know, that is another silver lining, which is that, yeah, there's probably there's. I mean, I would say that it's an overwhelming chance of us having like outbursts of, of right wing violence this year um, as this year goes on. We've already had some, yeah. but I'm thinking oh, we're yeah. going to be looking at a much bigger thing. But I don't really know if they have the power that they think they have. And I mean, that is a flaw of a lot of these sort of um, hyper hyper nationalist, hyper fascist is that they live in a fantasy world that doesn't actually represent reality, that they this don't really the have the hearts. This was the people. flaw of the antebellum or, or of the south of the confederate states they had this conception where they thought one of their soldiers could take out two of the opposite sides because you know like they essentialized their southernness and much like you know we do today the like the 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 character of the south was this like you know kind of bravado like you know hero uh dude that that could just beat anybody they really believed that like they 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 had super soldiers down there and they didn't and yeah. they got beat and, and, and so when yeah, that it's like the same thing it's the same sort of like the way that the right believes in it's sort of you know power um you know do, do, it, it is a form of arrogance it is like a check that their mouth is writing that their ass might not quite be able to catch yeah and I, I think that's something um i even talked about with regard to COVID earlier this year um i did a big stream talking about like when are we going to see the narrative break and um i think it's inevitable like i mean i think it already has for some people right like there, there comes a point where um you just you can't downplay when people have had personal family members die you know what i mean when it's when it gets to a point where um, it's no longer that you might know of somebody who had somebody die, but that you know somebody who's fallen ill or died. Um, that that becomes a very a reality that can overcome a lot of other things. And I think that 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 there's likely to be some of that going on with this election as well. Um, especially if um, I think especially if there's like an overwhelming victory um, in favor of Biden and Trump refuses to back down, I think that there's going to be a moment where a lot of people. Um, it's going to be a double down moment where there's going to be some people whose morale breaks and they they back off and then an even then that smaller minority has to double down and you just have to keep going and saying okay then these people are going to keep going strong but do they actually have the power they think they have and do and can they maintain this illusion and how long can they maintain it I mean I think it's true it's very true and um and uh, easy to say that like uh. That, that like the the U.S. for example has an, like an unprecedented right wing media arm, um, but does that mean that they can actually um, that they can actually overcome all of reality as reality continually goes against what's being taught to them, um, and they start yes. to feel that in their material lives, like they start to feel these things and see that like oh 
you are not you don't have the people the, the 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 power that you say that you have you aren't as strong as you say that you are it's that that contradiction um and you see this dripping out of trump's recent speeches too um trump talking about ah like we were laughing about it on my stream the town hall that he did where he's like 20 percent of seattle was taken over by 150 anarchists and we just did the math on stream of like wait you're saying 150 anarchists took on nine like what each anarchist took on 900 people in seattle and took over 20 percent of the city like come on now are you for real like it's just these things we're really become, skilled yeah yeah really empty skilled. for super soldiers that's yeah, the super soldiers but then like what how long can you keep that going how long can people do, can can that actually go when it comes into the face of like people actually having to put themselves on the line i think Mark markavius brought up a good point which is that the republicans don't exactly have like a a huge reserve of able of able-bodied people they have a whole lot of um a whole lot of like angry um like angry old guys and a whole lot of like sort of emasculated feeling um angry men but those people are a minority. They are a big minority in this country when you combine, when you put them up against everyone else who has something else to gain out of this, which is a bit of a silver lining, I think, in this situation. Not to put, a, to so, put us to rest on our laurels, but something to pay attention to as how we go forward. I want to I wanna push back on this a little bit, or maybe a better way to say this is contextualize it, because I don't disagree with what you're saying, Demon Mama, in that conservatives, especially hardcore conservatives, are a minority in the United States. Uh, but the one thing I would say is that they have a lot of uh, unwitting um, friends. They have a lot of fair weather friends, right? So when we talk about this like huge like percentage of Americans who are politically disengaged, right? A lot of these people tend to just uh, drift towards whatever the dominant Lol, hegemony be. may be. And for anyone in chat who's like, oh, what the hell is that I said emasculated white guys. It basically fair, means but, like yeah. the, the frame of what is acceptable, right? This is why uh, many people me. on the got left me. side of politics simply refer to themselves as liberal, uh, despite being, oh, I'm a progressive, oh, I'm a corporatist, I'm this, I'm that, I'm, I'm like whatever. Um, the same goes for the opposite side, right? They just call themselves conservative, despite being not that, that. So the one thing I would say is, despite them being a minority, the way that they have been able to hold uh, power for so long um, comes in a couple different fronts, and I'll try to keep it really short. Um, it comes from being able to control the capital in the country. The majority of the people who are capital owners and have uh, purchasing power in the economy um, are friendly towards conservatives or conservatives themselves. Um, and I would say the hmm. second part of that is that they control I don't know how to class that power cash um, crash. by but dividing people away from one another. You know, and they do this in all manner of different ways. But, you know, the reason why I would push back on this is because the same sort of thing that enables um, fascism and the same sort of thing that enables these sorts of behaviors and ideas to progress into society is also one of the things that makes uh, the liberal left complacent. Um, and we can, we can go into that at a different point, but the reason why I draw a little bit of caution here is I would not wait for this to die out. But you're not no, I think that the reason why this you're is seeing based. ahead is because of kind of the failures you're of based uh, and late stage imperial capitalism. And I would say that if we want to really take a hard like shake at this, take a hard stick at this, like we can't only get in the streets, uh, we can't only vote, um, but we also have to get organized. That's like the number one thing is we have to band together. We have to give people that sense of community that they're lacking. People need what's called a fourth space. So I'm sure all y'all have heard of this, but for anyone in the chat who doesn't know what this is, a fourth space is what used to Breakfast be traditionally really in the United States, like a church, um, a, like a, a public square, you know, this has kind of been like subsumed by places like Starbucks and Twitter. Uh, there are no more real free public spaces that people congregate in um, uh, that Twitch aren't chats online. And Discord. And that's one of the things that's kind of fed this yeah, concept of alienation. We do need to you know. So real, I think real life when stuff. we talk about uh, how to reach people, how to defeat these movements, all of the things we're talking about are really good and really important. But to me, another thing that is also really yeah, important during COVID. Um, is to yeah. uh, be present, to be there in people's lives, you know, uh, to be a positive example. We could, until the, until we're blue in the face, until we're rolling in our graves, try to appeal to people who don't agree with us. But I think we are almost better off spending our efforts trying to create a positive example. 
if there are these 50 percent of people who are so checked out that they can't you know they can't take a day off work they can't they, they don't give a fuck whatever the reason for their they're being checked out is whether there's a reason or not a reason i think the way that we can appeal to this large majority of people who just go along with whatever is acceptable is to give them an example so to say hey you know I, for instance, I am a communist. I am in the process of developing a farm with like a dozen friends of mine or so. Uh, a big portion of this project is to serve as an example that the kind of politics and economics that we talk about can not only work on a micro scale, but they can be ethical, profitable and comfortable. You know, and I think for people to really get on board with a lot of what we're talking about, they need an example. You know, so I think when we think about these things, we should try to orient how we talk about it and, you know, what we're aiming for in an effort of like deliverables. What can we give you versus what can I tell you? Right. Yeah. I think that uh, that's a good thing to do. Uh, I think that's an important thing to do is, uh, you know, at least not doomer pill other people. Um, but like all the 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 actions of one person like i i think that maybe we shouldn't over inflate uh like being a good example to the world because the people like the, really the good guys get used as a tool against the quote unquote bad guys the way that martin luther king is used against like the like present uh protests and and movement for civil rights you know what I mean? Like, be like, oh, well, this is the right way to do it. Why didn't? You, why are you doing it this other way? You're the bad ones. Does that make sense? Like, if you get, if you, if you're like, you know, if you're projecting this outside of your immediate community, um, I guess it's like, what is, like, so there, obviously, nothing is alone in a vacuum. I think that w maybe we just have to keep in mind, like, hmm. how much of a an effect does this have what what what's missing is there anything that we're not seeing um like why is it that uh we need all of this like extra i guess it doesn't i mean like yes people uh, appreciate help but that's not gonna necessarily change their mind just gonna be like oh this person's a really good guy so I feel like Breakfast Detective really put it well, right? Like we need to organize. We need to like identify what the problems are and we need to identify solutions, right? So Fidel Castro helped organize uh, like free healthcare and free school and all this shit. And then he went in front of a bunch of people and he was like, so you like this free healthcare, right? You like this like less violence in the free school and all this shit, right? And everybody's like, yeah. And then he was like, this is socialism, my friends. And they're like, oh, I'm fine. So, you know, like there's was it? Fidel Castro. But, oh. but, but like, um, so, so, you know, not to say Castro was perfect, but you know, that is a thing that happened, but, but here's, the, here's the thing, like, um, uh, what was I going to say? That's a rhetoric thing though, right? That's still a rhetoric. That's still like a, a Sometimes, charismatic yeah. Sometimes power peace kind of thing that extends Good to see you, by the way. And also, mm, uh, well, we're kind of having a, a all, distributional all discussion, aren't we? We're discussing about what we can uh, all do. Okay, so, so maybe maybe the important part would be identifying the opposing rhetoric. So I think we could all agree that MAGA is a fascist movement. I think some of that's just right? rhetoric, though. Yeah, I mean, is MAGA the movement, though? MAGA is, like, a, I think, a, like, a symptom of the, or, like, an indicator of being a part of, of the larger movement. I think it's too too small to be just fascist in itself, but in context, so like, uh, of like a lot of, keeping a lot of people like America, w like white, keeping America exactly the same as it is yeah. right now. Right. So, uh, I, so I see a lot of similarities between like what MAGA espouses and a lot of the shit I grew up adjacent um, to. We can talk about Alabama, that further. Because right? I grew up in a black community, um, went to a black high school. I genuinely think so a lot that of shit um, that MAGA I does have a lot of fascism like bias, white and I can explain and a lot that. of the shit that I hear is like watered down uh, versions I disagree with you of on that in the MAGA movement, right? So, so like the, the racist whites or whatever didn't really galvanize and organize around a movement besides like KKK or, or, what? or, uh, or, or like a political movement. They weren't in pol they weren't relevant in politics until MAGA, right? No, they just straight up. Well, this is the thing. They were always there. It's just that like the, 
Here, let me um, uh, okay, so let me address that after the panel. I'll put this little thing on like, the thing that we can entire, talk about on the notepad. Uh, we'll talk about it after because we have a we're doing a I politics don't even stream know after what Peacecraft. And generations are, but so like we've progressively uh, worsened our education standards. So we have all these people who don't know how to think about things on their own. They're just like input um, output kind of uh, education, and it's. Like, sorry, I didn't sleep last night. Well, I'm like trying to pull it. I'm trying to pull it together. One. Yeah, there's a few people. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. So this. I'll hop in here after this. Amer America has always had like been, uh, like a nation of white supremacy. Like, oh, run yeah. with that in mind. Yeah, that's true. Actively. But now the the normies who don't know anything, like your average person who literally just doesn't know any anything about how anything works and just wants to like live their life, they don't know that. Uh, some of them turn out to be into that. Some of them uh, are in denial of that. I mean, it, it's just yeah. Well, that's something that all of us of can address, stuff. though, isn't it? Like, I think that yeah. should be a a um a a. A, a good point for for all of us again in this sphere especially where um we right now have the ability to fill a void that that has been um sort of cut out by uh, the right wing in this country i mean for example like there's no doubt and i i invoke sort of like old pbs for for a, a lot of this because it's like this was something that was freely available to everyone nearly everyone was able to access these things and learn genuine pieces of history now i would say that stuff like pbs wasn't um wasn't willing to engage on certain parts of our history enough um however they certainly did and they also were um something that like i like the 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 example that comes to mind um is like sesame street which sesame street is a children's cartoon but mm -hmm. that spoke directly to the actual material struggles that a lot of these kids who were would be watching this because it's the only thing they had available at the time um you know were were, were dealing with and so it was able therefore to act as a a point of very real education that goes beyond just being entertainment and I think that um, I think that we have an opportunity, like those of us who who have these platforms, we have the ability to engage in that, to actually educate people um, on what are the real parts of history that aren't being taught in school because they're too controversial, but that are nonetheless yeah. verifiable, that you can learn and have your eyes opened, and that can change the way that you view certain things. I yeah. think that MAGA and and stuff like that is a part of a a sort of um, a, a front of of like sort of fascistic. Uh, upheaval like it's not just in and of itself it, it isn't necessarily the fascism but it's certainly a part of it this idea of like hearkening to an imagined past that was greater is absolutely a a, a historical signifier of fascistic um movements so i think it's important to um, recognize that and and acknowledge that okay it is the ignorance of history here but all of us are people who can actually start to pierce that veil we're the ones who can start saying oh yeah we need to actually teach people about history they need to know what actually happened in the place that they live um and i think that can happen can... Re relatively quick I feel like you're. Uh, um... No, 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 no. We've been, like people have been saying this forever, and like I went to weird fucking schools, uh, and they had like the most like ma uh, manifest destiny is a positive thing. Consider Columbus hero worship. Like you know, basically like some of the some of the texts were like like only. Uh, we're still pro apartheid until like very recent years, like new editions. Uh, it's not like people aren't being taught. This is more about like being taught from the beginning, right? Well, but like, you yourself know, mentioned educating. though earlier in this um in this conversation, right? That the thing that's changed is the internet. And I mean, I right, know right, again right, what right. what got me what, what what allowed me to escape this um, unbelievably oppressive and indoctrination was the fact that I was able to get access to the internet. I was able to find people who were telling these who offered counter narratives that I was then able to compare with what I had been taught in this place. I didn't have a choice 
in being a part of and go, wait a second, the, this was this was taking advantage of the fact that I had no other options at the time. And now I realize that there's more things to learn, that there's actually other perspectives. Yeah. And I, I think we should we should hammer that as hard as we can. And I think we shouldn't underestimate the value that the Internet has as as a dissemination tool for all for 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 counter narratives to what is being sort of voiced upon a lot of people now with all of these new initiatives like um like uh you know like this patriotic education stuff uh, like school isn't the only way that people learn in fact i would argue that they do a pretty good pretty bad job learning a lot of stuff in school um yeah. and therefore yeah, yeah. And I, felt, like I, I grew up with the, I, I grew up with that you know that cartoon that you talk about the with the the kids Anna going through Maniacs. time no 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 it's the, oh, no, the going yeah. through time and they see the bible or yeah flying house. I, I, I had some of yeah like so my aunt and uncle were evangelicals and they tried to exert that uh, that influence like whenever i would come over we'd watch superbook and they'd be like really keen on like yeah let's watch this cartoon aren't you excited and then on the other side i had the other grandma that was like a you know democratic party supporter and she would always kind of put PBS on. And it was kind of like through PBS hey, that I, post, you know, who did not grow up in an Happy urban environment, you. learned that that existed. Welcome There's a the certain um, part of the conservative movement that works by taking people like from the suburbs or people who haven't experienced life in an urban setting and sort of reinforcing Hello. the idea that, that these are bad neighborhoods. Like that's what your parents will tell you, you know. Is it, and it does break down like very much by race. Like usually, like the you know neighborhoods that they're claiming are are bad neighborhoods are minority um, neighborhoods. And Sesame Street does this thing where it kind of like breaks into possibly like conservative households and gives the kid um, more information than they're supposed to have. And once they see this and kind of like perceive, maybe consider the inequality that's going on, like that's a kid that's going down a very different road philosophically than one who stays sheltered, watches the Superbook or Bible Man. And anyone seen Bible Man? You know, all this evangelical garbage. If that's all your worldview is, um, you know, that that's that's a hard person to, um, you know, to. and I there mean, are Mr. people Rogers that get out of based. that, right? True. Like some of us are, are people who got out of that. But, you know, it, it, it makes it harder. And and I feel like, um, you know, as bad as PBS is now and as much as it is like kind of the subsidiary of, you know, a lot of corporate funding uh, and, and, you know, serves the interest of the wealthy, um, it did at one time, you know, it, it kind of do the exact opposite and, and, you know, break into the suburbs with a view of, that didn't get represented you know it's so easy and like so many shows um were going towards like let's just show a rich family i mean the, everybody wants to be rich right let's have them have a nice house and let's have them you know like and and you know there was like a, a this was like a counter sort of um you know message that was being pushed of like yeah no let's actually like talk about how a lot of people live instead of being you know, um, this suburban um, sort of focus, like, you know, That's which was smash. great it for the really advertisers because the advertisers, like they, they want to be in the house. They want to be appealing to the wealthy. And then PBS, you know, used to, uh, you know, not have that issue with advertisers. Well, I think there's another thing too, and this is sort of what I was hoping to um, sort of bridge between some of the stuff that we were talking about, uh, between what Bre Breakfast Detective was talking about and what we're now talking about regarding the internet. Excuse me. Um, so let like one of the material realities of the of the time that we live in is the fact that we live in a pandemic and here in the United States especially um not to be too US centric but here in the United States especially it's g genuinely deeply impacting our ability to socialize um and therefore i think that there is um we're sort of in a unique position where i think leveraging online communities is actually incredibly important and that means sometimes rethinking the way that we use online communities um, some examples of this that I think of people who've done really good is um, like like H Bomber Guy um, is a really good example of a bread tuber who's done some genuine material good um, use leveraging an online community where people have found real community and real connections with one another through this online space and also was able to come together to raise a ton of money for a really good cause which has genuinely affected the political landscape and I think likewise we see stuff like that with the serfs with the whole their their fundraiser for Maine Transnet which is incredibly important it's one of the you know like it's like the only charity in Maine that was that that they were able to funnel an incredible amount of money to to get their to um 
you know, be able to continue doing their work. So I think that we $40, all, $40,000. Yeah, 40000 It was in, in, incredible, genuinely incredible. So I think that while it's important, of course, to keep things in scope and like, again, I like, you know, I make a very clear effort of saying like my, my stream is not some sort of giant political project, but nonetheless, I do recognize that it is nonetheless a community. And that if we recognize that we are building communities and encourage safe, um, but, but, uh, like connection making, actual connection making, really reaching out and building together and, and coming together for things when there's needs, when there's community needs, building that sort of community can actually be incredible. And I think it can actually start to change things. And that's something that I think that we're still learning about. I think that a lot of us, you know, the internet is still quite new as far as, you know, on uh, how it impacts politics. But I think one of the things we should tr try to think about is especially given that we're living in a pandemic in an unprecedented time of, of social isolation that maybe we can come together and use these online spaces in more creative ways that actually do start to fill that need that give people the ability to yeah. start like you know pulling together and grabbing hands and doing the predator arm meme and saying yeah, yeah we can actually do this we can actually help each other and um i think some of that is a bit of that is coming to um, teach people more responsible social engagement online, but also to encourage people that, hey, like we don't all have to be um, paranoid and hateful and guarded at all times. We can actually start to reach out and touch one another in in healthy ways and, and bring ourselves together. And I do think that that could be incredibly powerful. I mean, hell, we know that 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 incredible feats of organization have been have been pulled off across social media yeah. so what's to say we can't do that ourselves what's to say I, that I any guess, of us I can't do what you're that? saying demon mama i mean i i have recently learned that you know it's important to kind of like like i mean like as much as we want to build a community and that's good and stuff like their sort of easy way to do that is is like a more parasocial model and i think that's something that is really important to to to, to you know it, it's kind of the way the path of least resistance i guess as a content creator and so it's important to always try to like correct for for that um tendency but yeah you know when it can be about the community rather than like some imagined like you know um, relationship with a you know H bomber guy uh, figure when it when it when it, the the creator becomes like something for the community to gather around rather than like a um, you know sort of a, a parasocial um, vision that that's uh, that's incredibly positive and yeah like j just like you're saying with COVID you know this is um, this is kind of how things are going because I doubt you but again, know we'll like talk COVID about may stick around for a while and I doubt that after COVID is gone, that it will be like the last, uh, you know, public health issue. Like, I mean, this sort of thing may be more normal, like that maybe more the nor new normal than we realize. Oh, I strongly and, um, disagree with you. You know, on the in a lot of ways, um, it's talk pushed about some, some um, things like, you know, working from home that should have been a long time coming that we've had the capacity to do for a long time, but just like, weren't doing out of habit so um yeah forming communities around these sort of you we'll know online okay. groups say we'll around talk about the content this afterwards. creator i think that's we got a about an hour, hour idea or two left on this channel um, and then we're gonna know, do a whole bunch of politics stuff so don't worry so uh can i can i make a comment about because i love all, all all of that but can i also make a comment about the supreme court justice pick barrett oh, right yeah 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 uh, senpai chow just pointed this out in chat uh go ahead breakfast detective be right back i'm gonna hit so the one of the things that i second. kind of like foresee in my crystal ball just... or maybe my crystal head because i see in the reflect in the camera i'm like i'm like i'm blinding people at a distance over here with this shine <laughs> um, if you had hair you'd be leon trotsky hey, hey. <laughs> no ice picks please <laughs> <laughs> i've done nothing wrong um so uh, one of the things that I foresee, uh, which is I, I, I wish the Democrats were better at politics to head this off at the pass, but I foresee him nominating uh, this white passing uh, like suburban woman um, so uh, they so she could be cross examined by the Democrats and then the Republicans can use this as a political ploy and oh. say, look at you suburban white women. You know, a big part of Trump's base, like here are the Democrats grilling someone who looks just like you, 
who sounds just like they're like you. Go the Karen vote. They're gonna go for the Karen vote. Holy shit! That might yeah. be a threat. Wait, oh, they've this... always had the Karen so, vote. Are you? Yeah. This, yeah. this assumes, this assumes that this is so effective and profound right? that yeah, all the women women that were Democrats that were going to vote for Biden is then going to switch their vote to Trump. And we already know from statistics that the large majority, a very large majority of women are Democrats or loyal yeah. Democrats. Chow, um, you were just saying in chat uh, how uh, it looks like Haberman is Trump's pick. Like they're, yeah, they're Barrett. saying that. Mm hmm. So, so uh, every, everybody the from aides really close to Trump uh, are suggesting okay. that Trump Barrett, is going to be yeah, choosing yeah. have been leading towards Barrett rather than the Goa, even though there is wide support in within the Senate on both sides for the Goa. Um, and then this person, this journalist from The New York Times, I've been informed from my Twitch chat that uh, has said that, yeah, Trump is going to be picking. We wouldn't know for sure. 100 percent until trump announces it tomorrow but that this seems to be the news yeah yeah so uh, one of the things that also kind of worries me is that there are more of likely voters there are more democrats who are willing to switch and vote for trump than there are republicans who are willing to switch and vote for for biden i Why? think i mean Why is, both I mean, both like, are really small right on that uh i don't I don't have it handy, but, you know, this is something that we can find that, like, we can look up. Um, I mean, like, well, my answer to it is that when it comes to presidential general elections, that most Democrats equally as well as most Republicans are willing, do not switch over to the other side because of that's returned. how partisan our elections have been. Hello. So, yeah. So what I was going to say to finish my point is just that uh, the numbers are really small on both sides. The numbers uh, from the meta study that I was seeing on these, like, you know, a bunch of different likely voter polls, you know, how, uh, you know, what is your enthusiasm? How likely are you willing to switch, et cetera? There's like something between like three to five percent, uh, probably more on the three percent side of Republicans who are willing to switch and vote for Biden. And there's something like anywhere from eight to uh, to 12 percent hmm. of Democrats, okay. so. likely Democratic voters who are willing to switch to Trump. My audio's been so around. that's something been that right? I see hey, as back, kind Hunter of Cruz. like a like a warning and signal. You, right. Pepper. Because like if there are that many people who bit. are uh, not enthusiastic about the voting process, whether it's voting for Pam Biden or hard voting to for manage. Democrat, uh, these are likely Ooh, Democrats being pulled get? too, not not independents. Um, what that says to me is that there is a void that Democrats could fill uh, by yep. measure of policy. Anymore. And what I worry is that they're going to just stick to their Fair guns enough. and say the political strategy that we've been running with for the past Fried 20 buffet. years, 20, 30 it. years, you know, uh, is sound. We're going to keep doing the same thing. They're going to vote for us and we're going to win. Um, but this has not always borne fruit, you know, and like I know. You know, as far as independent voters go, uh, three to four percent of people who choose to vote green are incredibly small. But what I worry is that a lot of the conversations that have been had are trying to get, you know, green voters to you know, vote Democrat as opposed to saying, hey, you 55 percent of voters who are checked out of the political process, let's phone bank to you. Let's get you in. Right. Because we're already looking at a little bit of a vulnerability here with potential Biden voters to switch and not vote for Biden. So if we're really trying to get like big numbers of people, then how the heck do we get all these other people in? That's something I think about a lot. OK, so I have a couple of comments on this. Uh, I'd be really interested in getting this study. So I know you don't you said that you don't have it on hand, but if you could find yeah, it and send it to me any time, I'd be really curious. I'd like to be looking at the methodology and what are the actual implications. Uh, the, the, the other comments that I have is that uh, while people will say that they are unenthusiastic about Biden and they will say that uh, there is a chance that they will likely vote, that does not reflect if this is going to lead to some action so like this is probably something on their mind but usually what happens over general elections is that they they stick to their party because of partisanship and democrats vote democrats and republicans vote republicans um yeah that's it yeah i mean especially when you've got you know either establishment candidates on the democratic side or um you know i i guess you'd 
call them like Trumpian candidate. People are using that word now. Like it's, 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 it's a thing. It's like the thing that took over the Republican party and is, is now in charge. And it's like, you know, there's, there's people that were considered like kingmakers in the Obama era that, that were, that are now irrelevant um, in terms of the Republican status quo. So you know I agree with you. You know what started Cruz. it though, actually, or not you started party? it, but well, that but also like one like a key figure i remember is when sarah palin was asked oh, what newspaper she reads and she just said all of them and she committed to saying all of them and that's when people just started kind of saying shit without even trying you know what i mean like it it's i read all the papers even the workers daily <laughs> so, so somebody you just at all of them Somebody in my chat that's actually going to become a streamer really soon named Kami Buddhist just made a take that is uh That's a great name. A Trump... Yeah, isn't it, right? Interesting. Uh, we need a Trump on the left. Mean but humanitarian. What do you guys think about can that? You drop that? Can, that. can you drop that? Can you drop that name? He's a little bit angry, but he's not exactly Except mean. Not... Who would fit that mold? So like, I, I, I don't know. Communist? I don't know. <laughs> no. I don't think there is a character who fits that mold. I... Yeah. <laughs> so I'll say this. I I think I agree with the thought behind that more than I agree with the wording of that. So if we're saying, uh, do we want, you know, a strong, charismatic leader on the left? I think, like, absolutely we do. We've been lacking that for a long time. You know, I think the left has the virtue of a much larger pool of people to draw from. We're not just looking at, like, old white guys with money. We have all manner of incredibly oh, persuasive cool. people from That's all really cool. backgrounds. Like Nina Turner is someone who I love. Oh, fuck She's yeah. the kind of person who gets out on the stage and just like gets everyone like fucking amening by the end of it. So, uh, yeah, there are a lot of people who we could do, but I think the issue here is as long as we're working with inside organization in a party duopoly system, it's not a meritocracy. It's not a matter. It's, it's not a measure of, how charismatic or persuasive you are that leads to your success. We've seen many people fail upwards because of nepotistic connections that they have or their ability to generate donations and donor money. So I would say if you are someone who's like, hey, you know, I really want a charismatic leader, I really want a powerful person, I really want to participate in party politics, I would say check out the Green Party. I would yeah. say check out the PSL. I would say there are other organizations that we can use to unite around as a voting block to push policy what? issues that we care deeply no. about and that this is an avenue that that's more meritocratic for you or maybe somebody who you support to be able to succeed in this place and be that charismatic leader. Wait, merit yeah, that's wait, truth. meritocracy? Wait, I'm confused. I'm sorry. Wait, what? I'm, are you I'm saying, are you saying meritocratic as in like that, like normally politics is kind of transactional and it's about like kissing the right asses and you want a politics that's really about like, yeah, who's got charisma? Who's moving the people? Who can be an actual leader like Nina Turner, you know, who can stand up there and really get people's hearts and souls into things <laughs> rather than, you know, who has kissed the right asses and, you know, has the right party, has the right donors behind them and... Uh, yeah, I, th I think I get what you're saying. Super yeah, it's, it's like, you know, not not a standard usage of meritocratic, but I I, I feel you. Um, well, I think that, that um... I'm going to I'm going to after this is done, I'm going to go into the political hyperbolic time chamber and I will come out as Lenin 2.0. There you nice. go. <laughs> um, I was going to say, like, I don't know. I feel like um, I feel like it's it's a very uh, uh, it's a very rough battle to um, to try and win or, or support a third party. Um, in, in our current system right now, we don't even have like a parliamentary system. Uh, we, our democracy is in shambles, but, but I would say that one thing that we might, if saying that pre presuming that we can weather November and there isn't just, it doesn't, the worst case scenario doesn't unfold, which is a possibility. It is on the table now. Um, I think that we can look towards, um, uh, actually changing the way that we vote. And I actually believe that that's a, that would make a pretty um, radical change. Uh, I think a lot of people um, dismiss sort of um, electoralism um, out of hand and with good reason, um, because under our current system, if you're operating within the framework of a two-party system, um, it's pretty bad. The, the outcomes are pretty bad and your chance of actually getting representation is pretty bad. However, we do know that it's possible. Um, 
Maine, for example, is one of the states that recently drastically reformed their vote, which allowed them to oust one of the worst governors they've had. Um, a, a guy who, who prided himself, who ran his entire campaign on being Trump before Trump was in power. Um, and he had the same approach, this sort of crass, hateful way. They were able to get rid of him because they were able to reform to an actually fair form of voting that stopped splitting the, the um, unique population of Maine, which tends to be sort of politically independent um, into, uh, you know, by using um, instant runoff voting. I think that we can actually win those on a state level. Um, and that sort of reform would allow for actually meaningful reform to pass up to the to the federal level, hopefully. Um, but again, a lot of that is going to hinge on whether we can weather this uh, particular storm that's coming in front of us. Um, and I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, again, this whole, there's so many factors going into the dire straits of, of the, the November election. It's it's really hard to to talk about a whole lot of electoral strategy outside of we need to make sure that Trump loses as hard as possible um, because that will be the that will be the best chance at, at us um, winning over the population to not agree in the legitimacy of his power grab. I don't think there's any doubt that he's going to do it. It's just the exact way in which he's going to do it at this point. We've had you know gross sabotaging of the USPS, which I've been talking about like ad nauseum. I've been talking about this endlessly. Um, we've had, um, like, I mean, gen genuinely on the USPS front, it's ridiculous. Not only was there defunding, there was also explicit va vandalization of machines that handle ballot sorting. There's been a tripling of the cost of ballot of mail-in ballot postage, which makes it impossible for a lot of states to implement mail-in voting at all. And we have the, we have all of that compounding with the fact that there's been an incredible amount of mail delivery um, folks um, falling ill thanks to COVID um, and the fact that they've been barely able to negotiate for workers' rights whatsoever for the last few years. So we have all of these things going on. And um, and then we also have, of course, the messaging, the just raw propaganda on a national level. And it is really hard. To, it is really hard to calculate what reforms we can do beyond this particular situation so it, it, yeah it's uh so yeah. that's, that's i'd love to ask the question again so like bearing in mind that sure maga is a fascist hey movement, thanks for the follow mike happy to have you welcome to the fold that america was pretty much incepted with uh with all this in mind um when is it time well, I mean, it depends on what, what you're what you're problem? asking about, because I think that there are many like I don't think that uh, I don't know. I think there's some mistakes in um, drawing directly from like past precedent um, on how, you know, how you change things in the modern era. Like, I don't know. I don't yeah. know if we have an answer to we, that question. I don't know always, if there is a single time like this is something that like we, yeah, we always ahead. have to look at what are the conditions of today? Uh, what are the circumstances that we're dealing with and then be adaptable and flexible with how we orient ourselves and how we attack certain problems, right? Um, I just really quickly want to offer something that I just kind of remembered from something Irene said in the beginning of this conversation, that a lot of people feel depressed. A lot of people feel really anxious about what's going on. They feel very isolated and alienated. And I would say that uh, this is purely anecdotal from personal experience. I too have felt this. I'm a bipolar person so you know some of it is part for the course right but for the part that is external and outside of myself um, a way that i have been able to attack this feeling uh, and gain a sense of uh, a little bit more of a sense of purpose and belonging is to join some of these organizations to participate in these in these things it gives me a sense of purpose and a goal that's outside of myself that's outside of my own personal goals and having that outside motivating factor that to me gives me uh, hope uh, also ends up giving me fulfillment. And when you're having a real tough time getting out of bed, you're having a real hard day, it's a lot easier when you have people who are cheering you on, who want your support, who care about your well-being, and you have a place He's where you right. belong. The only thing I would say is to kind of fill out the conversation that we were having earlier is don't join a cult. <laughs> don't make it QAnon. <laughs> join a really wholesome place, right? Join something that aligns with your values. Don't let yourself be co-opted by some bad actor, whether the bad actor is an organization, a person, the feeling of fear, greed, selfishness, hopelessness. Don't give in. It may be hard. You may have off days. That's perfectly fine. But let's try to channel that fucking 
like awful angst into energy that we can really use as passionate change, right? So like I promise you, joining an organization, at least for me, has been very fulfilling, so much so that I joined multiple. Join an org. That sounds exhausting. Lamal. Breakfast Detective, I like what you're saying. I want to propose uh, not just like a like different path, but uh, something to add on to that other people may use is uh, for me personally, I find a lot of fulfillment in just knowledge and just knowing something yeah. and being That's able hard. to explain and decipher something as complicated like politics. So a, a lot of the times when uh, I get the impression that a lot of times when people feel doomer about like, say, for example, what has been referenced on this panel oh, alone I'm has sorry, been Rakasan, the party duopoly is like, let us ask ourselves, why is the United States and other countries in a two party system with a very small third party? And uh, what political scientists have come up with is something called Dubringer's Law. And this is something that you could just w look it up on Wikipedia. And it's this guy, Dubringer, who basically explains that, okay, the reason why the United States and other countries have a two-party system is because they run first past the post elections. And first past the post is something that's complicated, but it incentivizes parties to try to get a large amount of a plurality in order to reach the majority or at least like more support than the other person than the opposite than the opposition party whereas in multi-party uh countries that have multi-party systems they have proportional representation and it doesn't matter if you have 20 percent or 30 percent of the population that is within your party you're going to get that amount or somewhat similar amount in representation in a legislature yeah so look it up just... just law Totally. So that's really good. I agree with all of that. The only thing I'll say is I'll push back in some <clears throat> myths that are being uh, shared in chat and say that when you're in a first past the post uh, system, when you vote for a third party, <clears throat> your intention should not be, hey, with this third party, Their we're going to win and up. we're going to win everything. But yeah. No, that's not the some case of the at all. Branches have fallen when you behind, vote that's for, for sure. or participate in third party politics, Their especially new in the United States, nice, first past the post voting systems, electoral systems, what you're doing is forming a voting block and a you know, you're you're forming a voting block around a core set of issues where what you're saying is to these 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 this major party duopoly, if you want our votes, you have to adopt our policy platforms because that's how this is gonna work. Historically, that's the, the whole reason why we got the new deal with the like in the United States with the Farmer Labor Party co uh, coalition. And the same reason why characters like Bernie Sanders and AOC adopted the Green New Deal, because that was created by a coalition. Rather, maybe a better way to say this is a voting block of people who said, these are my issues. If you want my vote, you have to adopt these policies. That's the same way that the libertarian uh, what's it called? The, the Tea Party move uh, move movement got their policies into the Republican Party, right? So a lot of people will kind of bandy about this myth and I say, oh, you know, you're just crash. voting Green Party to win. Um, but that's that's not how first past the post uh, politics works. And if you let yourself uh, participate in politics out of fear, you know, uh, that like, oh, my God, if I don't do this, that I'm absolutely fucked. You know, I would recommend people to the history of the United States, which has always been about class and not particularly been about uh, certain issues, you know, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Oh, you know, now we're friendly to gay people because it's popular, et cetera, et cetera. What we're talking about is a system that what? disadvantages people by class and has always. So if you're someone who participates in politics out of fear, I would say this. What you want to do is, is isolate yourself as much as possible from that fear by participating in local hey, politics. Hey, happy to have you. Hello in, from in America that to you Scotland. In, and also happy by you, building Mike. those mutual aid networks that will make a significant difference in your life. And in the Wait, life, in the outcome what? of the in, in the outcome of the situation too, like I mean, mutual aids, like we're coming up against potentially like really hard times. We're going to need that those mutual aid networks in place just to you know kind of survive this thing. But it also has the effect of winning hearts and minds. If what we're about is a mutual aid, you know what I mean? That gives people a sign of who the good who who who's operating in good faith here. You know what? Uh, okay. A couple. I mean, that's things. kind of true. But um, perhaps I don't a little bit really reductive, Mike. No. Well, first of all, I, I think that people don't know what because a lot of people aid means. Um. Also, I don't. I don't know. 
I don't know. It sounded... I'm not saying that it was class reductionist, but it seemed like it was putting more emphasis on, like, like uh, over over the other... Just, like, in invoking the, the you know, uh, when people... This animation when, on the Ico's uh, thing is very strange uh, to me. LGBTQ people started getting a eh, little bit of rights sometimes, and then not... You know, like, I just... I don't know. I'm confused. Like I think down downplaying. I I just don't completely understand what you were getting at. A breakfast detective? Yes. Wanna? Okay. Wanna so when? Uh, yeah. So let's kind of rewind the tape, right? When we talk about mutual aid, mutual aid is just a real quick, punchy way to to say helping yourself and helping your neighbors, but maybe in the opposite order, right? So what you're doing is you're in a non-COVID sense, participating in a food bank, you're volunteering at a library, you're volunteering at a school, you're volunteering at the Y, you're volunteering at your church, you know, any way right, that, that you can help out in your community and then hopefully be part of a network that you can is also a very rely on when of, you need of help is a mutual aid. We should focus so on that a lot. However you can imagine right. pitching yeah. out, whether it's donating Not, soup yeah, cans yeah, no, or... That wasn't my question. I mean, like, okay. I know what mutual aid is. I mean, like, I'm saying that most people, that's what their churches do. And, so, right and that's what we should do for each other. But right. as far as, like, creating change... Uh, I don't so, know why, I, I just don't know why, why the, like, uh, what did you say? Like gay rights part. Yeah. The like reason why I said that is because it's a, it's a, it's a pet issue. Uh, this is, is there, there, issue. there, yes, there hasn't been a significant push from either party, uh, to legitimize, uh, queer people beyond the sense of, okay, uh, now, uh, people can get married, right? Um, when we see some of these small gains, like you see how uh, Kavanaugh uh, was the was the uh, what, like the tiebreaker in the issue that the federal government is not going to file fire people for being trans. One of the things that we have to keep in mind is that that's at exclusively federal uh, jobs. Uh, so if you work for a state government, if you work for a private company, they can still fire you for being trans and say, "Oh, but it wasn't a culture fit. I'm so sorry." They it has kicked nothing everyone to do out with of the military. Identity. Sure, sure, sure. So what I'm they saying is, like, who was it? Like, Samantha, when I say that, that, that Samantha Banana or, so, or what, I'm sorry, you're I not wrong. But what I'm saying is, what we're uh, talking about are issues that affect millions and millions of Americans that aren't just the thousand people or so in the military. And that's not saying that they're not important. I'm not saying that at all. But what okay, I'm saying so what about, is, these are issues like, that are much bigger what about, than what like, you're the making. Protests, out. like Black Lives Matter stuff, and and you know. What is your question? I mean, like. That's something that affects much more people, and that is also like an issue, like a social justice issue, and that is also something that people, you know, will the Democratic Party will only like vaguely throw crumbs at. I just don't know right. what I just I don't understand. Like, are you saying that it's different? Like, w like we should behave differently towards some of the issues versus the others? Or no, like if it's I'm big not, enough, I'm not really I'm just sure confused. what your question is or what you're even getting at. No, because I don't think he is. The, the, um, gay fesh, you know, no, I don't the, think he is at all. The pet. I think some people might read it that way, but I genuinely like don't believe he is. He makes queer issues very, very, very important on his channel. It's tokenization. So what that essentially means is we're going to signal that, like, hey, we see that these are issues that you care about. So here's Ico some red meat, sort of right? But if you ask people nationally how how have their lives changed. A lot of people will tell you not very much. I don't have the protections that I have. I don't have the rights that I that I have. I don't feel a level of safe that I want to, right? So when right. we're talking about how do we do those things, right? We can appeal to people who don't care about us until we're blue in the face. Or we can participate in, a, in, in local ways to improve our community and get in people's faces. When people how say, oh man, I don't like- Systemic injustice though by- that so what well, i'm talking about i think you're kind of jumping all over the place so i'm trying to i'm trying to be very laser beam focused here right when i brought up the church before one of the main reasons that the church interacts with the community is they do outreach they give people food yes. they give people bibles yeah, all i think of a sudden so people i think go, it's just a phrasing hey, wow, issue the church doesn't seem so bad i'm gonna try and cut me. through this because i have so some stuff i really when want to i do yes. outreach right as a communist in my community people go you know i'm very public about it i'm very open they go wow i didn't expect the communist to be so 
nice and so empathetic and so down to earth and actually give a shit about me. And I'm like, yeah, man, we're out here. That's what we're trying to do. And that's how you change those hearts yeah. and minds, right? No, no, I am so anti-changing hearts and minds. Hearts and minds are, I mean, like, as a part of, like, a, as a focus. <laughs> like, that's a thing that you do on the side, but you can't, like, there are people I'm, I'm confused. who have, like, actual, yes, like, yes. it's not about Yes, I think that's uh, what they're trying to say. To, like, Wimbledon. realize, oh, I think communists that's what, that's aren't, what, uh, like, Breakfast evil, was trying and, to like, say. realize the rhetoric isn't correct, but it's more like... W people stand on the sidelines um and take kind of like i think they're just talking uh, past each other honestly holy hell ho when it comes to things like you know people getting like kidnapped on the street people getting shot sure. by plain clothes what is your what is your contention stuff. because so i my, feel like you're kind of just my, drumming my out my contention, contention is just because you you brought up you brought up uh like you referred to i'm sorry like I know that I can't like verbatim uh, recall what you okay. said, but it was like uh, so you brought up something yeah, about could, like you know like sometimes. gay rights or something, and also yeah, like queer, uh, more pet so things. Queer like, issues like are tokenized as... in national politics, right. right? Everything is tokenized, though. All like social justice issues are <laughs> That's all true, tokenized holy, holy. when it comes to okay. people in power. Corporations, but also, politicians, like, this is an issue that all of it. It's me just personally, tokenized. so that's why I'm talking about it. Because I'm a queer person and these issues affect me personally. Okay, I'm also, that's, yes, definitely. That's, I feel that's like maybe the there's some talking but past on another happening. I, right, hey, I just want to know you. why you, why you refer to it as a pet thing. Uh, like, I just don't know what the five times. Can we, means. Okay, so I go, I've answered this like five different times now. I'd like to either, you either hear what I'm saying or acknowledge that you're not hearing what I'm saying. And maybe we can include other panelists here and move on. Does someone else understand uh, what yes. I'm missing? A pet um, concern just means that it's personal and significant to the individual who is expressing it, but it doesn't intend to diminish or lessen the concern for the overall populace. It's how some people have priorities about different issues that they deal with. And so that's what Breakfast Detective was expressing, that this is a particularly uh, prioritized issue for their worldview. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, so, well, so like, go ahead. I think atari has been trying to get in for a while. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to make sure that you two kind of got to an understanding. But yeah, um, Gatari, I've seen your your hands been up for a while. Uh, so this is like this is like a thing you said a while ago, which is why I'm like hesitant to start talking because it's unrelated. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Please change the topic. <laughs> uh, it has to do with like I've been reading a lot of uh, McGowan recently, who's like this uh, psychoanalyst in Vermont, and. I think that what, when you characterized your investment in politics as like a mental health exercise, I don't know if that's a healthy thing we should be advocating for because it, it channels our libidinal energy that we've been like frustrated with into politics, which then when our movements fail, uh, signifies to the individual that they aren't enough and that they are a failure, right? So I think that when it comes to working on like, you know, your connection to your community, your connection to people around you, there needs to be a large aspect of that that has nothing to do with uh, politics at all. And that involving your entire social life in and around politics is not a healthy way to live your life. Um, and I think that there's like important things that we need to do to manage ourselves outside the context of, you know, politics. Uh, and then the other thing you're talking about was like the Green Party voting block. I think that this like idea that there is like a voting block that we can like make that like liberals will have to like move towards or like you know try to gain their vote is kind of a misconception simply because when does the actual voting block as a group decide to change their vote and i don't think that any concessions that the like joe biden could make would actually make people who are currently planning on voting green party switch to vote for joe biden and while it might be important to make the establishment concedes specific points. I don't know if this method is the I most effective, that afterwards, but it Mike. could be the most effective. I'm not Here, sure. I'll take this right? down as a note. Um, we can talk about afterwards or in so the politics stream. A couple of things. So, so, they they absolutely, they, so first of all, they absolutely could, but they're a minority and they're not the plurality that the majority of Democratic Party voters are. So that's the real reason why they're not likely to adopt their policy. And the second point is the historical reality of third parties in a first-past-the-post system, specifically in the United States, 
reflects kind of exactly what I was talking about. So if you're kind of like not super up on that history, I totally get it. It's really weird and niche, but I would encourage you to look into the founding of the New Deal, the Farmer Labor Party, their Congress, their coalition, the Democratic uh, politicians that they primaried, and the process that in which they got their policies look at, look at Look at what Trekkie just said. Yeah, nothing Joe Biden does will make me vote for him. That's what I'm saying. Is it like this idea that it's a voting block that we're trying to get the Democratic establishment to move towards just as a, like, not an actual thing? Like, Yeah, the Greens okay, will never vote for Biden or the DNC. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think there's there's a couple of things. Like when we're talking about the historicity of third parties and how they affect things, um, I – it's really it's really it's an interesting thing but but it also needs to be taken in context of the 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 p political environment of the time like for example if we look at fdr like um a big influence one of the big influences on fdr swinging further left was the uh the 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 famous slash infamous huey long um who was an incredibly incredibly popular politician um Strong. what's that Proto-Trump. Yeah, in some ways, yeah. Um, but with a d definitive left-wing bent. And, uh, like... Arguable. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah, it's arguable. I mean... We have, we have arguments, you know, you but, cash them out. But, but, I mean, the thing... Like, I mean, I'm not here to engage in, like, in litigating a long-dead pol politician's, like, le like <laughs> Me bent. Me neither. I mean, it's okay. Nonetheless, th there is no doubting that um, whether you think he had, like, an actual left-wing bent or if it was just, like... I mean, he he certainly addressed a lot of the material conditions of the poor at the time, and that afforded him an incredible amount of um, of uh, power until he was assassinated, um, which you know maybe perhaps says a lot about his influence on the uh, on the the political stage. But um, he was somebody who threatened was a member of the Democratic Party and threatened to go independent um, in order to uh, you know pull the New Deal. Um, further left in in a lot of ways and at least at least more paying attention to what we would at least perhaps we don't want to call it left but he certainly pulled it in a populist direction where he wanted the new deal to address the needs of the poor significantly more and we can see that that's an example of somebody um using like a third a potential third party threat to swing it but that's a totally different context than what we're talking about now i don't believe that um unfortunately i don't believe any of the third parties in the united states bring that power right now um, and that might change in the future, especially if we reform votes in in local and on obviously on a federal level, totally change the 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 um, political landscape of our country. Um, but again, I mean, I think right now, um, this election, I I really don't feel that it's going to have anything to do with third parties. I don't think it's even going to have anything to do with the the the, the um, like necessarily the messaging of the republicans or the messaging of the democrats it's going to be i believe this is going to be a test of whether turnout can overcome outright corruption and that's the position that we're in right now um and uh i think that most uh people who are hoping to not persist in a a fascistic system or not hoping to exist under that um should recognize that that the best thing that we can do is ensure that every front, every single strength that we can capitalize on, we absolutely should in this in this particular instance. And if that means um, urging people to actually go out to vote, if that means helping people get their votes out, just so that we have that um, that um, you know that number to say this is something that we can hold on to, this is something that we can actually use in winning over the mass public. I think that's very important, and I think that we can have further discussions about the efficacy of third parties and whatnot. Um, once we stop the very obvious power grab that's happening from the far right in this country. And I also think that we're much more likely to win those victories, um, towards making the viability of third parties, um, like much more meaningful. Um, if we, if we're able to operate under a, a Biden type person than a Donald Trump type person, I am like not an accelerationist. I don't think that that sort of thing is going to, um, have good results, um, and I say this again, um, very sensitively as a member of a, um, very obvious and open, um, uh, you know, minority marginalized group that has been targeted throughout all of history. Um, you know, the last, uh, most famous, you know, fascistic uprising targeted, um, trans and gay people first. That was the, you know, like that was the, the burning of the, the Institute for Sexual Studies was one of the, 
first incidences that was that was the uh sparks of persecution in germany so yeah, and germany was at like at the forefront of that the, stuff yep. in terms of like progress in terms of like actual like you know um like uh tolerance of, of of gay people like germany was was well ahead of a lot of the rest of the world so it's not like you know this happened in some you know sort of chuddy um environment this was you know a, a movement that swept up um through a very you know progressive tolerant society for the time yeah um i mean i think there was a lot there's a lot of history that can be sorted out there i i, I just feel that um one of the things that has bogged down the online left over the last couple of months has been um a lot of sort of theoretical arguments about how you leverage power within the dnc and i don't think we're like having that conversation i mean i, I mean i mean we're having the conversation but i don't think that's what's we're what we're actually talking about i don't think that's what we're trying to accomplish and um as much as it would be grand for us to be able to boost the power of third parties or other or caucuses or whatever we're dealing with trying to find a way to mitigate the damage from a um a fascistic uprising that is happening right now and so that's why the only reason why i say we should probably back burner a lot of the the minutiae about third parties um is for that reason um and also recognize that like um if we're looking to uh to win people to the the left i think that a addressing their material needs is one of the best ways you can do it and there is historic quite a bit of historical precedent um for this in the past i mean perhaps the best example is vietnam which you know in the in their uh in the beginning of their revolutions what they did was they addressed the needs the hunger of the people there were literally many starving people and they made it a priority to get those people fed and people are going to remember who fed them people are going to remember who it was whose hand brought went reached out and touched the world and grabbed the food for them and they're more willing to do the same so we need to keep that in mind and i know that like a lot of times especially in this um in this atmosphere that there's so much scary stuff on the table but we have to remember that at the end of the day all humans are driven by need for water need for food and need for shelter and beyond that there's other emotional needs and stuff like that but addressing those needs goes an incredible way and people don't forget that i i mean i have from my own experience that like part of the things that changed my view world view of the world was was meeting people who were willing to go out of their way and actually help me when i was hungry people who said who said yeah i'm willing to bend the rules to make sure that you have food and i went wait a second like i've been looking at the world the whole wrong way and i think that a lot of people can be impact like you know influenced in that way and um i think sometimes we lose ourselves in a lot of the federal the talk of federal the talk of even state and we forget that like communities have hungry people in them right now communities have houseless people in them right now and if we can change that that those people can become activated yeah. And also, you know, in terms of like um, all, those of us who do, you know, join an org or, you know, feel, um, you know, e even in that, that we're disempowered, that there's not a lot we can do to actually change the material realities that we're dealing with. I mean, like this kind of thing, there is actually not that we should concentrate on the power aspect of it, but there is a power in being involved in I the process you, Craft, of feeding yes. people. And, and just by doing that, you know, you empower your org. Um, you, you know, I'm like, for, like I know, I know hearts and minds is kind of a cliche phrase and maybe we should stay away from cliches that were used by the United States military in the Vietnam conflict, like, like that one. But, um, you know, in terms too. of, yeah, it, well, in terms of just building goodwill, that's what I'm kind of thinking of, building goodwill with, uh, well, you know, I'm not hosting American the panel people, because um, there Mike. is a lot of mistrust. I'm just an attendant. There is so a lot of you um, want to go to no comment chicks. of conservative yeah. communities to I'm going to be engaging with anybody it, on the left as this horrible Antifa, like, you know, like, like parody of a, you know, what they their, their worst fears. Yeah, this of is a the, panel show. So the, most the people here have their own chats and then like there's a panel chat their family on no comment or whatever. Channel. And when they see that, like, no, actually, we you know, run a soup kitchen. That's that's what we do. Or like, maybe even something a little bit better, like, you know, a, a grocery um, distribution, a food uh, pantry, or, you know, like it, it, when they see um, that in a different context, then it does sort of break up the um, narrative that that is what the left is about, the, you know, destruction and the kind of, you know, caricature that's that's drawn for them.
Yeah. Um, Aiko, yeah. is that a pee pee dancing in the background? Oh, it's um the, the lady in the. Hey, radiator. thanks for the follow, Twitch Tepic. It's have terrifying. You, you... I zoomed in and I freaked out in my chair. Breakfast detective. Oh, you are now unmuted. I just noticed. That. Sorry about that. Um, I was just gonna say that's that's one of the things that I kind of drill into a lot. From my point of view, like being a communist in the United States is an incredibly antagonistic position to be in. Um, we have no success. We've almost never had success in the United States. Um, and at almost every turn, we are infiltrated, uh, maligned, and attacked. Um, so when I think about uh, what to do in the United States, I think about you know, the fact that we may have an out-and-out -out fascist now, but the United States has been pretty jingoistic and very close to that for a very long time. You know, and that, yeah. when I think of how to make the Antifa biggest Freddy? difference in people's lives, Where's I think Antifa encouraging Freddy? them yeah. to vote is great. Sure. Like, I, I, I wish we lived in a country where 100 percent of people voted. But I also think that exactly what Irene I don't and Demon Mama were just talking about, the biggest difference we can make in people's lives is I making a difference German in their lives. A little bit. A very the biggest little bit, difference we can make towards making sure now. that we all feel safe and like we belong and have a sense of purpose is by coming together that. in whatever small way that we can, bad, right? But... Nobody has to be a superhero, but just by participating, you know, even if it's just donating a can of soup, like that makes you a hero. So it's really no. important, you know, for us to really kind of come together and do what we can. This is the this is the thing that I meant when uh when I meant like the that like feel feel good politics can be uh dangerous because like I said like uh yeah, yes it is good to uh be involved with uh with uh nonprofits hmm. Stuff. like i i do my own thing with issues that like are important to me but also like we shouldn't don't let don't let we can't let ourselves feel like the world is a better place because of it because still especially when we are like when we can be made to feel safe I like, go, the world is a miserable enough shown. place without us being on the side of the people making it miserable. The world is no, already I'm dark. Not. And heavy. I'm talking and about the doing whatever we I'm can talking about the people who are people. dying. I'm talking sure, about we should people be doing whatever we can to uplift people and not telling them that, like, I don't give a shit about changing your mind or impacting your life. I don't give a shit about helping That's you. That's not like, I'm saying that, that, that we should be putting I'm out not there. changing... I'm not changing Republican hearts and minds. I'm not changing people who aren't already going to like do like the basic things. I'm not gonna. I'm not telling she's people talking about here. to change their minds. I'm not doing. I'm not. I'm not taking the the um, the emotional. You're, like, you're killing mental. people over here. Well, that's okay. not what I'm doing. I'm saying let's like not lose sight of of things that are. I don't know. Like honestly, like I guess maybe it's the framing. I don't understand. It's not either. the mutual aid part. It's the framing of like do this. It makes you a hero. It makes you feel good. It's just, it. It's not. People it's need to feel a, good. I go. People need to feel like they have purpose but in their lives. Not about their selves. Well, purpose wait a second. It's, it's about you are a part of something feeling greater good while helping than people. Just... If you're pushing back against the feeling that like I should feel good or somebody else should feel good when they help another person, maybe you need to do some self-reflection here. Here, here's the I thing. I just think. Go ahead. Oh, I, w I was just gonna say, like, I, I mean, I feel like there's synthesis in this, in this, in this, right? Like, we can say. Um, yeah, we shouldn't rest on our laurels. We should realize we have an incredible amount of work to be done. But I, I genuinely think it's incredibly, incredibly important for people to enjoy and relish the good feeling that they get from, from participating in a community. I mean, I can't tell you how much, um, like personally, how much inspiration I've gotten from taking part in stuff like mutual aid initiatives, from going out there and seeing, wow, there's actually a lot of people in this. There's a lot of people doing this stuff. And uh, it's not like a, an incredible, it's not like an impossible thing to, um, to, to, to overcome. And while I don't think that we should like overly self-aggrandize, obviously, I don't think there's anything wrong with celebrating um, celebrating the fact that like, hey, 
if you're able to to take something, a privilege that you have, whether it is a can of soup or whether it's a hundred thousand dollars that you're gonna put towards some sort of charity, whatever your thing that you can do is, you should be able to recognize, hey, wait a minute, this is this is me reaching out and touching and changing the world. And I think that is actually incredibly psychologically important to a lot of people to be able to recognize that, wait a minute, I can actually impact the world. I might only be able to impact it in this little way. I might only be able to help one neighbor last another day, but I've made that neighbor last another day. And I do think that's really important for us to acknowledge. And, but I do, I understand what you're, what you're getting at, Ico, in saying that like, we don't want to rest on our laurels. We don't want to, you know, it, you know, make this mistake of like, oh, I bought, I bought a vegan product, therefore I'm saving the world. But I think what we're talking about is something more direct. When you go out and you're able to directly help somebody in your community and, and, and avert um, disaster for that person, we should relish and encourage that feeling. That is the, that is the, the sort of social lifeblood that, that many, many people, especially here in the United States, where people are very socially atomized, are missing in their lives. It's that oxytocin like flood that's like, oh, wow, I'm a part of something. I'm, I did this. Like I, as an individual, am reaching out and, and willingly participating in a collective. And that's really cool. That's and really, really and cool. And breaking through the alienation that, that capitalism just like right. spreads. Yeah. That's the thing, though, is like I'm I feel like I'm coming off as being against these things when I am just uh, what I'm trying to say is, yes, all of those things are important. Community is everything for people who uh, are going through literally anything. What it is having um, having a sense of of like being a part of of something that is bigger than just you that you're contributing to is like a uh, one of the best things when you when you're not questioning am i spent am i wasting my time doing this or that like when you're in the moment when you're there with someone and you know a hundred percent there's nowhere else that you could be that would be more valuable than when you where you are now with the people you are now so what i am saying though is if there's too uh too much focus on like those like little like the the small or the more like local things but at the expense of of letting ourselves feel like we this accomplished yeah. more than we did or at least I don't know, maybe forgetting about some others. I think I'm still stuck on like the 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 pet uh thing. I think oh. that's what it is. Okay. I think I I'm still stuck on like the idea of like it just came off and I'm not saying like that breakfast detective meant it this way. I've just been like hearing a lot of shit lately, so it's just something that like uh is is just tickling in in my brain it's on your radar the idea of it yeah the idea of social justice issues um and what's happening right now being downplayed into uh you know more niche or pet things i go do you know who you're talking about oh, first of so is there anyone else on the panel who took what i said the way that i go is taking it uh no Why? but i i could sort of probably synthesize what's been going on throughout this entire discussion uh without actually having to do so i'm just going to talk about my my two cents in that i don't think i think it's really safe to say and correct me if i'm wrong that everybody here doesn't have like a hierarchy on certain types of actions there's not one action that is deemed superior than the other and we don't say we're not going to be saying that oh That's if you did this fair. you could have been doing yeah. something else and you're a terrible person for doing that uh so then uh, for me, I know that how I'm going to be approaching the study as well as uh, the talk as well as the, the actual action of politics is going to be very different from Breakfast Detective. And I recognize that. Uh, but I don't think Breakfast Detective is going to be that person who says, oh, you're just your, your nose is stuck between the books. You're just a pseudo intellectual and you don't actually do anything, blah, blah, blah. You're you're a terrible person and you're useless. So I don't think Breakfast Detective is going to be doing that. No, I, that's not what I meant at all. I I know that's not what you. I not wait. I I, I had no, that, this had nothing that, to do. This had nothing to do with you, Iko. This was just like my two cents on, uh, on the, the, this entire the like kind of like this entire yes the the overall 
Um, okay. And so then like kind of how maybe your statements would be fitting in what I said is that uh, and maybe this there's like some confusion from other people is that I don't think you are trying to downplay what they are actually saying, but more so adding in the that there are possibilities that other people could be choosing in order to fulfill the same sort of uh, goals of achieving like personal happiness or fulfillment, et cetera, et cetera, or like their own approach to politics. So then like something that is like not the antithesis of Breakfast Detective, just of what he's been saying, just different would be like, for example, me. Right. I think also I'm going to say I have, I might be like a, a personal uh bias in in the form hmm. of being like i'm a little i'm a little lost on this specific of, thing like because of of like it's a little tough church the church and and religion and and communities that I are fucking feel that. Cults. yeah so it's like i'm i i just am very like uh, Look, we, we all, we all, oh, come we, on. We all, it's been we good. We all love you here so, we all love you here so much, and we're gonna give you like a million passes. So, like, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. But, but, like, uh, yeah, no, you just, are. just, I mean, like, you could look at Iko's graphics and tell that it's obvious that she likes making people feel good. So, you know, <laughs> like, that's not, that's not like really in yeah. question or anything like that. <laughs> like, honestly, she smokes weed so much, and she, she already said she didn't get good sleep last night. I don't think there's like any kind Meat of poison way that, could that be a thing. Can, I think it's you know, hold feasible. Fire to Ico yeah. or anything like that. But in, in on a lighter note, on a much lighter note, our boy Electric Copper is turning fifty today. Can we sing him happy birthday? Wait, who is? Can we sing Electric Copper happy birthday for turning fifty today? I will not sing you happy okay. birthday, but I hope you have a freaking awesome birthday. I can Holy say crap. happy Thanks birthday. I don't know who you are, but happy birthday. We've got a birthday in uh, in chat. This has never happened before. It is your sing? birthday today, Electric Copper. Oh wait, he's not actually. I don't know that. But one. it is his birthday. It is his birthday. But the not actually fifty, that. but birthday. Still, birthdays should, are cool. We, are you do, one? Do people, is there a, are is, you two? People wanna? Are you three? Are you four? Well, something I wanted to drop into here that is is something I think that might. Uh, sort of uh, touch on things that both Breakfast Detective and Ico would find valuable is I just wanted to give an example of something that like this is a bit of an anecdote but it, I think it's valuable nonetheless. Um, the 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 clinic that that I've been able to get a an incredible incredible healthcare from um, here in my hometown is one that was founded um, in the 60s by the Black Panther Party. Um, actually, I think it might have been the early, early 70s now that I think of it. But this was founded by the Black Panthers, and it's still going to this day. And it has been devoted to giving as cheap health care as possible to as many people as possible. And specifically, um, not discriminating based on gender or, or creed or anything like that. And it has genuinely changed my own life. And I... I see so many people going there and being able to get healthcare who otherwise wouldn't be able to. And this is the sort of thing that I'm talking about that you can build, you can build, um, you can build, I don't want to say an institution because that sounds like way too governmental, but you can build structures that help people for a very long time that address very real social problems um, through uh, a philosophy of m mutual aid. And it did take individuals in that organization going, this is a need that I know of, that I'm familiar with. I Like, you know, the founder of this, the person who, who spearheaded this project was very sensitive to the needs of... of um, you know the the uh, queer and and black communities of of Seattle and was and and was willing to say hey like we these people have a need how can we meet this how do we get the funds necessary to build something that can sustain and now for decades it's managed to to save people's lives people who then go on and 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 build the world that we live in now and and it's hard sometimes for us to recognize the the exact impact of what we do but i think that it's it is you know simultaneously possible for us to recognize that like addressing material needs on an individual basis is the start and we can build larger solutions that persist on past our own lives past even when we might be we might die and our work might still be touching the world might still be um echoing um so you know i think that's something that that um you know this this fragmented atomized 
um, American left can realize that if we find ways to build, to actually build, to actually touch the world, we might see some of those social problems start to be start to be alleviated through means that we didn't think was possible not all of it is a struggle of trying to win over the approval of a, of a state a lot of it is saying hey wait a minute we're people we have things at our fingertips that we can contribute and use to build our own structures some people refer to this as dual power other people simply would refer to this as just reaching out and reaching your community just working in your community i think those things are important and i do think that it's important for us to consider hey wait a minute maybe we can do more than just deliver a can of soup. Maybe we have uh, some capability that we haven't yet acknowledged yet and say, hey, this is something I didn't know that I could use. I can use this to build something. I can use this to change the world in a positive direction in a way that leaves people less vulnerable to falling into hateful ideologies, which prey on people's vulnerabilities and needs um, and offer them false solutions. We can offer them real solutions, lasting solutions that will then empower them and their family for generations to come sometimes. Yeah. So the idea of dual power structures, it's kind of like if there's a need that your state isn't taking care of, that is being unmet, basically provide that need today and you're actually going to be building um, potential like power for tomorrow. Um, you're, you're, you know, I mean, like what really gives government legitimacy Much at love, the end Rakasan. of the day Have a wonderful is day. people's needs being taken Hopefully care work of, is, is people's is needs being and, and bad. Calm. And, um, you know, that happens in the privileged part of the world, but that doesn't really, you know, happen in the other part of the world. And the, you know, trick is that to not let this part see this part. Um, but when you set up, you know, an uh, organization that does uh, start to meet those needs, in a way, you're setting um, the legitimacy for any sort of future, um, you know, what what might be able to fill a power vacuum um, that comes from the kind of political collapses that we're likely to see in the future. Like we're talking about, and I don't want to ring the alarm bells again, because Lord knows that we've all like had enough, like, you know, of the catecholamines running through our bodies from being on this constant alert. But like, there's a good chance that this, there's going to be a constitutional crisis. And like, you know, not just one in that, like, you know, holy shit, what are we going to do? Like, this is like a budget showdown or something like that. Like, a real serious like crisis of legitimacy for the current government and um in a lot of ways like these sorts of things that demon mama is proposing and, and breakfast detective has talked about like these are um methods or, or things that might benefit us in terms of you know surviving shocks like that um that that are you know you're likely to see more and more of at the in late stage capitalism like we're experiencing now um yeah the neglect of institution and like the the sort of pointed neglect of institution and um of infrastructure are things that um that are very real in our current political landscape um i mean hell one of the best examples is just the the federal government refusing to give anything to the to anyone except for corporations that it's just like yeah the only people who are going to get anything are these corporations who don't give anything to the people they're just filling their bank accounts more and allowing them to continue speculating on the stock market and the the reality is though that on the ground like there's all this money stuff going around and we could all use money but there's real needs that can be addressed where where the government has failed um you know like I don't know. We live in a very complicated time, so every issue is different. But I mean, you know, you might not be able to do anything about the the the, the state of your roads declining in your state. You know, that might be a very hard road like thing to cross. But you might be able to go, hey, wait a minute. A lot of these like government funded institutions, like uh, like SNAP and stuff, have been rolling back so maybe there is a way that we can share food maybe there's a way we can lower people's um bills maybe there's a way that we can um come together as like a tenant community and say hey like this rent is killing us all we if you want to keep tenants if you want to keep having your bills paid you got to lower the rent so that we can make it and those are ways that you might be able to address these massive um institutional and infrastructural problems on a, on a, an individual or a local level that might actually really change that and other people can learn from that and 
yeah, so... Anything that disrupts the atomization, the tendency towards atomization and alienation inherent in late-stage capitalism is going to be beneficial because that is the one thing that breaks their um, system is when people actually start to work together. Um, they don't want us to be able to pull together. They don't want us to be able to negotiate as a, as a block. They want to, you know, they want us all separately. They want to take us on... You know, as individuals, hey, and as much as the, I like, I, I appreciate Cylon. individual freedom. Happy to have you. And welcome to the you know, fold. Um, it, it's We're another matter you. when it comes to it, when individualism takes the form of disempowerment by separation from people that really should be um, you, that we really should be um, working together with. Um, I've probably got going to this uh, debate round I have, so I, I probably got to go. Okay, well, thank you um, for um, being here as always, Guattari. And do you want to give a little um, commercial for yourself on your way out? Yeah, just check, check me out on Twitter. I'm a Guattari with a one instead of an I. It was great talking with you. It was thanks, awesome for, to meet thanks you. for having me on. Yeah, thanks for being here. It's I, Aiko, is that your <laughs> voice? There we go. <laughs> it's about time for some voice. Uh, Mods. Free what? Sponsored by free and free lotion. Oh my god, have we got a sponsor now? now? Have we got a sponsor? Is Freem sponsoring me? Freem sponsors um, Ico. Well, no. Freem's loose lotion what? Also I don't know what this is. This is some inner community meme. I don't know. Anywhere that Peter Pansoff hangs out in. Peter Pansoff, yeah. Is the best. If, the best. if you use Freem's Loose Lotion, you can turn any beta male baseball cap into an alpha male garrison cap with one hand. True. If you've ever wanted to escape the clutches of your enemies, coating yourself in Freem's Loose Lotion is the finest way to do it. I don't try get to this catch meme. me now. I don't know this meme at all. True, very true. I have no idea what this meme is. Yeah. So, um, I gotta get going in a little bit. I think I might start to wrap up here just because I gotta finish doing this stuff and building a desk. Um, I think I'm gonna follow good good Atari if that's all right. Yeah, well, good to yeah. um, talk to you again, Breakfast Detective. I think it Do you want to um, talk about anything you got in the works? Anything Wait, you wanna, before uh, that, I want to remind him, do send me that thing you mentioned before, that study. I'll try. I'll be honest. I got a lot of shit going on. I'm, I'm probably going to forget about it. But if you ask me in like a week or two when I have more free time, I can get it for you then. I will remind you once every day. That's yes, actually, yes. Uh, if I have ADHD, you want me to remind, like, remember to do something, you either got to be a phone ADHD. alarm or do that. It's very good <laughs> for streamers. Um, so with that being said, uh, thank you. I love you all. It was excellent talking to you. Uh, Aiko, I love arguing with you. Let's do it all the time. <laughs> I love you. Somebody, somebody, uh, I can somebody talk about that please a bit, clip okay. that unison true. That was great. True. I think we um, might have clipped the um, <coughs> the audio, but I'll I'll see what I can do with it. Yeah, it, maybe it'll sound cool like that. I don't know. Clipping. It is, did. Uh, it was like really technique. harmonic. It was really good. Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, "What is that? Is that a third? Like, it sounded like another person was chiming in, but it, yeah, it was, it was like the three harmonic. people saying true at the same time. It was yeah, good. yeah, true. true. Um, yeah. So we're still on a little bit of hiatus right now. I got um. I'm building a building a studio a little bit. Got a, got some more things coming in. To finish it up. Um, really excited to be working with an animator, Llama Jeff, Llama underscore Jeff on Twitter. Check him out. He does awesome work. Um, so with that being said, really I am like, Breakfast Detective. Um, really like follow every single one of these beautiful people on this panel, and especially sub to Irene. Again, it's September. It's never been cheaper to support True, your favorite creators. True, it has never they been cheaper. They get the same amount of money. You save money. Unfortunately, it only works for first-time subscribers. Burn, so if you're burn. a big fan of the show, you I tune in here often, bit. you're like, hey, I want to support the show. It's the perfect time to do it. It's that true, being though. said, I am Breakfast Detective. Follow me on Twitter if you like at Breakfast Detect to see all the good takes I retweet from other people who are smarter than me. Um, and with that, I will see you all very soon. 
And uh, thank you for having me on. Bye, Breakfast Detective. Bye, Breakfast. See you later. Adios. <sighs> I think we're winding down here, and then we'll go into my politics stream. Make and sure you stay around for the politics. Talk about that no, I mean, I, I'm just glad we have a sponsor. I was, I was going to do more uh, loose lotion uh, commercials, if that's all right. <laughs> sure. Can I? Um, I don't know what this meme is. I'll I'll show you uh I'll show you a commercial actually. Okay. For Frames Loose Lotion. Yes. Our new sponsor. Or soon to be. Once Peter. I don't know. Peter I don't think it is, but it's not really a debate. It's more of just a discussion. Oh, panel. Peter Pantsoff has definitely been here. But yeah, the yeah, I said. Next time, yeah. mention, mention yeah. it next time. Um. If anyone is is a, a Freem's uh, sub in Irene's chat, there's a new Freem's Loose Lotion emote as well. Oh, damn. Are That's there different right. flavors of Freem's Loose Lotion? Is it all just like the same smell? Yeah, I don't know like, smell, exactly or is, are there on. different, like, I will admit. Hey, smells, thanks for the follow, like, Lone Wolf Cry. Happy um, to have you. Welcome to now. the fold. Can, um... Can he join the call and uh Is Freem's here? Yeah, we we we're gonna get the, the the sponsor in. Let's let's have a word from our sponsor. I just really want the original protein. Yeah, here's some emotes. Flavor. Bam, 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 bam. Here you that's go. You want my emotes? Okay. Blammo. Look at I these. These are beautiful. Protein-y, salty flavors. I prefer like some nice essential oils, you know, kind of like mixed into the... Look at them. Look at those emotes. <laughs> these are my channel emotes. You <laughs> so want my channel even... emotes? You you, you sub case, and you'll get all, all right, of these. Only three ninety nine right now for first time subbers. And you get these beautifully yeah, made emotes in. made by the girlfriend oh, wait, of Demon I Mama. Think... Oh, it has a 10. Yeah, Mama Mald is based. It looks so good. Hey, the orb um, gentleman. Really Happy to have you. Welcome people. to the fold. I think, um, let's see for sure. I don't oh, think that Johnny's John. coming. Yeah, I sent a last minute um, invite. Um, there we go. And What's Rainbow Silk listening to? Um, um, just a little music. Oh, okay. no, that's all good. Don't worry about it. Listen, if okay, you can't Frames, support, it's all good, okay? In... Don't worry about it. Uh, it's just if you want the emotes. Yes. Hey, you got the you money. Guys hear me? Oh, we can, uh, but you're a robot. Robo. Hey, thank you so Let's much for the sub, Renata Bordreau. Thank you so thank very you, much. The upcoming topic is we're going to continue talking about the Trump coup. They're just doing a small promo oh, right I'm now. Here. Just give um, me one second. Thank you so much for that very generous sub. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Every single sub helps my channel grow. So thank you so much. Upcoming topic is uh, is the Trump coup, the and then I'm going before. to be doing general politics discussion yeah, after yeah. this. We have a whole Hearts bunch of stuff to go over, everything from again. imperialism to Donald Trump. We're going to talk about a whole bunch it's of stuff afterwards game. with just me. It's a what game? Uh, a maps game. Oh, yeah, kind of. It's like a... I, yep. I don't know what it's the, grand strategy. The, the, uh, yeah, it's like so a really complicated. I don't know what's going on right here. Oh, hey, Cosmic uh, yeah, Sean, thank you so very, very much. Look at that generosity. Thank you so very much. You might as well call it that. I mean, it's other people. Cosmic Sean, that's so like, no, fucking so generous of you. Cash McCrash, you are now a sub. Look at that. Look at that, Cash McCrash. You got a sub now. Now you can use the emotes. Enjoy them. Good to talk to you, Freem. Thanks again for the support. This show is 100% viewer support. I'm so glad brains. I'm so glad somebody's noticed like the uh the good work that we're doing enough to like want to advertise their lotion uh with us yeah uh thank you for becoming a frames loose lotion streamer much better than the far Just a little confused as to what's going on lady bag lotion, right. which is kind of trash but that's bag another lotion. conversation oh because in canada um, oh, lotion comes in bags is um what does lotion come in bags in Canada? Milk yes. does. Where, where does Canada, what does Canada got to do with this? Um, what is Canada? Where the lotion comes from. Originally. Wait, um, no, 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 no. I'm the about to play the, the, the commercial. What is the plural um, for moose? Is the plural for moose also moose? I'm, or? Yes. It I'm is, confused. That is the case. It's, it's Sorry, moose. guys. I don't know what this is. Moose. Just bear with okay. me for a little bit. I'll M-O-S. figure out. I... Um, are we are we ending the panel? What are we doing here? We're kind of memeing. Uh, we just brought on uh, frames for a second to explain about them. Okay. Because <laughs> my audience is very confused at the, the moment. Affiliate program. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, it feels like Let a little bit. Let me show you this. Time, but... I had to do uh, 
I have to show a clip because of it being the um, loose like lotion guy right that sits right. on the back of the toilet. I mean, I know who I'm frames it. I'm kind of afraid it. to mention my lotion right now because I don't want Demon Mama to debate the hell out of me. Oh, I'll debate the hell out of you. What do you want to debate about? <laughs> you know, I'm the I'm the foremost. I'm the demon of Twitch politics. You know this. You've been you've been the peacemaker today, though, Demon Mama. It's you've funny. Been, like, yeah, de-escalating. The, I mean, here's the, the thing. I like to debate. Happen. I like to debate spicy with people that I have strong disagreements with. All right, that's it. That's all that it is. All right, I debate I've spicy. Been, uh, I've been trying to search in my brain something that we could disagree about, but I haven't found. Apparently, it. I've, I've think... become the, the tear maker of Twitch politics. The tear maker. Come on and, yeah, we just oh, come I on and cry, cry on my, not tear okay. list, like oh, crying. That's I mean, that's true. I see. I, see. Yeah. I thought you were talking about. Yeah, sorry, that's not the Danabo tear maker. I mean, I don't know. Wait, I don't know what you mean, Orb gentlemen. Here. Guys. Guys, can, um, here, if you want to to witness it, I didn't have time to do the voiceover before, so I had to do it live. Um, I'm confused. I don't know if there's... Males like to debate? Get you are a female? Do you Wait, do you want me to just play it on... Lots of women oh, like yeah. to debate. A lot of the reasons more... why women don't like... Okay, um, okay. Um, like I mean, that's very essentialist of you, or gentlemen. Keep in mind that not all women are the same. I'm putting so. it there. And there's lots of women who do like to debate. It's just very, oh, very stigmatized in our society. So much work. There so, it is. I might ditch out of this uh, panel and just go to politics soon. We'll see. I heard. Yeah, Wait, we were wondering we about to... the affiliate program for for Freem's loose <laughs> how they, how they I consider the myself a very uh, empathetic person. Works. In fact, um, yeah, I have just... to. I'll have to whip up your uh, your your discount code. And, uh, I don't only, I get paid, uh, we take American currency for the lotion, but we'll also trade cigarettes. Oh, I disagree with that, Orb Gentleman. What about ramen? I, I genuinely disagree cigarettes? with you on that. You can pay, you can pay in, uh, I think that's a little bit sexist of you to say, honestly. I know cigarettes. you probably don't mean it, but it is kind oh, of. Oh, I've got cigarettes, but can, can we still get the lotion in the original salty protein flavor? Yeah, hold on. Give me a minute, and if this doesn't oh, yeah, clear up, I'll move. Right. Yeah, because I know a it lot of viewers depends. ready to go about um, more, I, I more deep on to more interesting topics. I will but. say that the, what one of the magical things about Freem's solution is is that the uh, oh, scents and flavors are not consistent, which is a good thing. Um, okay. Oh, oh wait. Depends on I can get my... wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Peter pants off. Uh, oh, Peter. PTS. All right. Um... Peter pants off is kind of like the George <laughs> no offense, Soros but, uh... of... Uh, Cream's loose lotion. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna head out and go talk to my chat now. Um, okay. Because I don't. My chat has no clue what's going on. This feels like it's like some other meme. I, no, no offense. It just. Yeah. It, it is. We'll it is it's not meme prepared than, you know, yet. Well, we'll, it's not prepared content, but it will be. Unfortunately. Uh, it, it, it's so, an infomercial. So, even Mama doesn't want to be part of the infomercial. That's totally understandable. Oh, I just don't know what any of this means at all. I'm literally completely lost. I don't know if this oh, is a shit. meme. I don't know if this is a real starts. thing. Hey. Um, well, it, it, is it real as anything on Twitch? I mean, you're, you're, you're stand, you're standing like over Alf and Star Goose, you know, I mean, like how real and, and Jolene, uh, Cujo, I mean, like how real is any of this, right? But, um, yeah, uh, it's, but yeah, I mean, like totally understandable. I mean, if you want to, you know, do your commercial in depth. Um, or whatever. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just, uh, like, I don't know. I have a lot of people, you know, who want to talk about politics and I don't really know what any of this is. So, um, it's just, it's nothing, it's nothing personal. I'm not mad. I just, no, it know. wouldn't take it that way. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I'm, I'm a similar boat. I'm also going to head out. Um, it's fine because I mean, we can always wait till next time. It's my fault for not doing, uh, being more pre prepared, but I will hey, be thanks, in Lone Wolf the Cry. when, when, what, what did hopefully you guys you'll talk stick around today, like politically was. There you go. Is that breakfast detective is wrong and I'm right? Oh. That's it. <laughs> That we talked about a lot of stuff. Here. We talked about QAnon. We talked about the potential, you know, what what the reality of the the Trump coup likelihood and what scenarios might fold out from that. We talked about the impact of the Supreme Court a little bit. Um, yeah, we've been on a lot of topics. So then we talked about, you know, um, efficacious mutual aid. Um, we talked about all like how you can build lasting structures that will continue to do aid. Um, and sort of looking beyond your own individual impact on the community onto how you can build a, you know, a larger impact on the community. So we've, we've talked about quite a bit, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of mutual aid. Uh, 
do a lot of work in my community. Hell yeah. Sick. Why is this upside down? Um, do you want to tell us about that a little bit? Even um, though this is not my stream. You, typically Why? on Twitch, I try to keep okay. my the, the the things that I work with separate because I've already been Fair doxed enough. once. And mm. not that I care about being doxed, but I don't want like people harassing the organizations I work with. Makes Fair. sense. Okay, guys. I'm going to head out. Thank you for having me. I'm going to go be a nerd and play video games. Ew, video games. Ew. Gross. Right, we're going to show this commercial. Uh, Aiko, I've got your, I finally got yes. it queued up. Sorry. I uh, modified my screen that would get to be a, Wait, I, I, I had to do some things in OBS. Oh. I had to pull some strings, but let's watch uh, your commercial for Frames Loose Lotion. Okay. I'm, I'm going to roll out as I well. Love your... you all very much. It was great discussing with you. Uh, Demon Mama live on Twitch here. We're going to be talking about politics uh, if anyone's interested in that, but everyone else enjoy the rest of the stream. Thanks for hey, having me, Irene. I I beat Demon Mama in this debate. Yeah, so you, bad I got owned. Bad. Absolutely debate. wrecked. You're, you're rage quitting, aren't you? I'm right rage now. quitting. Take this. Rage Go quit. ahead, clip it. I'm rage quitting. I'm out of oh here. God, it's so much drama on my. No stream. comment. Check has like... made has made the most dram dramatic panel that I can possibly imagine. So much that even Demon Mama raged out. Yeah, Holy shit. that's right. Okay, let's oh, play. No, now we're play. gonna be talking about it for the next week, and oh, everyone's yeah. gonna call it drama. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Another, Hold on a second. Real genuine question: Were people talking about me for a week? Um, it was. It was about the whole, you know, deal. The, the oh, whole, really? Uh, it's so funny because multiple people came to me. And were like. I think you've been talking about this too much. I'm like, wait, I didn't stream for three days since the panel. So I guess a no, lot of people were talking about yeah, me, but like, I wasn't. Were a lot of people talking about it. And, you know, I mean, like some of them like wow. hadn't even seen the panel. Like I was on a, I don't know. I, I don't want to, I don't want to like start drama or anything, but I was on a panel that almost was just like ready to like, just like go for it. And I was like, wait a minute, has anybody seen the VOD? And they were like, I've seen the clip. And it's like, oh, you might want to see a little bit of, you know, but anyway. Um, yeah, I'm making yeah, speak for Kez boxes. A hot topic, and, and it's still, um, I don't know. I, wow. I don't know if it Damn, does. people should come talk to me. I didn't even know that there were people talking about me. I, I guess oh, I... No, 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 they weren't. I don't think anybody was talking shit about you. It was mainly the focus was on Kenny, right? Yeah, um, Demon well, Parma, and, and, you know, you're um, in the clip, right? But... Um, I mean, I was, know, the, I was the griller. I, I will openly admit that. I was I was putting the, putting the heat on. Yeah, yeah, you were applying those logic trees. I, I but uh, people were like, um, people were mad at Kenny, or they were mad at um, Senpai Chow for some reason. But it was just like both of their views, I think, got mischaracterized a little bit. And then you know, people kind of like you know focused on on those. And um, but uh, yeah, like I, th these are Pootie you know, like I obviously uh, these are friends of mine and and I don't think either of them are beyond the pale but yeah those are spicy panel for sure for absolutely sure. well all right uh, again much love to all of you have a lot of fun and I'll see you all soon it was great talking with all of you genuinely yeah. it was great cheers bye okay. another victim falls into the moisturized void oh my god okay. all right all right all right all right okay all right everyone Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's do some politics, right? We're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Will Trump, Trump steal the election? And much, much more. Here we go. Here we go. All right. All right, so that was an interesting panel, was it not? I feel like it was really interesting. I really lost track of things towards the end. Um, I definitely lost track of things towards the end. Um, but I feel like we had a lot of good, um, a lot of good discussions. I don't know what the fuck is going on in chat. Chat, what the fuck is going on? The orb gentleman, what is going on in here? Destiny is like a pure male, never cries. Didn't, wait a minute, what? What the fuck are you talking about? Hey, orb gentleman. Hey, orb gentlemen, do you want to debate? Do you, would you like to debate about stuff? Would you like to have a little conversation? Because um, on this channel, we like to do a whole lot of debate. So would you like to come on and, and talk to me? Do you want to come on and talk to me? We can we can bat our ideas back and forth and see who's gonna see whose ideas come out on top in the uh, you know the arena 
of logic and reason. You want to come on? Orb gentlemen, this is your opportunity. I can tell you how to do it. It's real easy. Orb gentlemen, orb gentlemen, orb gentlemen, orb gentlemen, do you want to debate? Because I will debate you. I am a woman and I will debate you. And I'll beat you in facts and logic. Oh, ho! orb guy, where are you? You disappeared from chat? Orb guy, orb guy. Oh, your mom doesn't let you speak in the house. She will cry like crazy. Oh, okay. That sounds like a great, um, this sounds like a, a really great thing. So let me offer you this. Um, what it sounds like right now is that you're trolling in my chat and you're wasting my chat's time. So I would like it if you have something you want to say here, you really want to participate in this conversation. Um, how about you give us an actual thing to talk about? Hey, bam, dab.